What's up guys? It's yo boy Omni Sensei. Welcome to, What If I Was Reborn in a TLA? Becoming the Greatest Waterbender, Part 2. Remember to check out the original story, the link is in the description. With all that out of the way, enjoy. Iroh's tea was as delicious no, more delicious than I had expected, a truly magnificent work of art, making any other tea I had ever tasted garbage. It was impressive how good a cup of tea could be. Do you like it? Iroh inquired with a soft smile, and I couldn't help but wonder, why was he trusting me? I do, I nodded, holding the cup up to him, asking for a refill, if safe to assume your nephew is trying to capture the avatar right now as we speak right? I chuckled, so much anger, he needs more help than I do. I pointed to the fact he was here trying to help me, instead of helping of nephew. Yes, Iroh chuckled with a tone of sadness, he is on a path of self-discovery. After all, anger is a sign something needs to change. But only him can change that something, all I can do is guide him through his trials, and what about me? I inquired as I took a sip of my delicious tea. Everyone has a monster deep within, there is a poem that explains that in detail. And it goes like this, Iroh smiled, the monsters were never under my bed. That was a nothing but myth, because the monster was inside my head. I fear no monsters, for no monsters I see. Because all this time the monster has always been me. That was deep, I that is deep, but it has so many meanings. It means, we make our own monsters, then fear them for what they show us about ourselves. Iroh explained as he filled my cup of tea, we can't escape our minds, but we can control what we are, some are not worth forgiving. I sighed. No, but sometimes we must forgive the unforgivable, Iroh smiled. Like you did with the people of Ba Sing Si, I said, knowing, all too well, how his son Lu Ten had died. I did, Iroh smiled, his face full of pain. I'm sorry, I said softly. The most painful goodbyes are the ones that are left unsaid and never explained, Iroh said as a tear fell down his cheek at the beginning. I wanted nothing more than to destroy the city, but I decided it was best to let go of my hate. Thanks for the tea. I nodded as I stood up. I will take your words to heart, but don't expect much of me. It was a pleasure to have some nice tea with you. Iroh smiled, back to his cheerful self. It was, I nodded. Arn POV the Northern Water Tribe was under siege, and their numbers were overwhelming. I knew deep down they were no way the tribe would survive. Or at least that's what I thought until Akira appeared in the battlefield. I finally understood why they called him a demon his disregard for life was painful. He was killing every enemy on his way, and he was showing no remorse. It's not right. I stated, all life is precious he has no right to take it. Arn, um, this is war soccer side. I know you don't want to, but a war can't be won without bloodshed. It's a sad reality, but it's the one we live in. He has the power to stop them without violence. I counted, he simply chose to kill them. I did, that voice, Akira. Why? I inquired as I turned to face him. Um, you are but a child that unfortunately has a big role in this wicked game. Akira chuckled bitterly. But I understand, he smiled, slowly floating towards me how. Was he an airbender? Normally it is forbidden to kill. Therefore all murderers are and should be punished unless, of course, I kill in large numbers, and to the sound of trumpets. War is not an excuse to in the split of an eye, Akira had punched me in the guts taking all the air out of my lungs. You don't like the way the world works. Akira smiled, kneeling to my level, then change it. You have the power to do so, but as long as you are this weak your voice will be drowned in the million cries of pain of the people that you failed to save. He winked at me, next time show me how strong your resolve is. Um, can anyone unfreeze me? Sokka shouted, next time. You POV the siege started, and it ended in less than a day. And I knew it was all thanks to Akira. Hey, I turned around to see Akira, smiling at me, is everything over? I asked. It is, Akira nodded, jumping into my bed like a kid. It's time, time, time to go, isn't it? Do you have to? I need to see the world. I need to find my path, Akira answered, stretching his hands as if trying to catch something. I will miss you. I cried hugging him tightly, promise to visit, I will, if you promise to kick Han's ass, Akira chuckled. Do you need anything, before leaving? I asked, ready to help him. No, Akira shook his head, kissing my forehead, take care while I'm gone. I will, Akira POV I had said my goodbyes to everyone I cared, Sakura, you, and here I was standing with Crowley on my shoulder, in front of the spirit oasis inside the royal castle. A few years ago, you two called me I said, as I stared at the duo, forever dancing on the water, you two helped me molded my very core to what I am today, 
and for that I will be forever thankful, Kor quote Crowley added. I will find a way to enter the world you two abandoned, and I will learn from the spirits, and one day I will come back and see you two dance once again. I bowed, thank you masters for all the knowledge you shared with me, Kor. What yes, let's go Crowley. I chuckled at my impatient partner. After leaving the northern water on a trading boat, I became aware that I felt better the more I separated from the tribe. It was weird to be honest. My normally aggressive state of mind was gone, and I couldn't help but shook my head in amusement at myself. But I couldn't hide the fact I felt better, enormously so. But why I suppose I will find that out later. The ride in the boat was bumpy, and the hay on my seat was itchy against my skin. But the night wind was pleasantly cool. The sea was calm, and the sights of icebergs soothed my mind. Since the sun had set, the sea was completely dark most of the time, with the reflection of the moon shining on the water like a mirror. It was relaxing. Now and then, I would catch strange movements in the sea. Wild beasts roaming wild in it, but nothing to worry about. Trader Hirsch was talking about the Earth Kingdom capital, Ba Sing Si, with a sense of pride boasting about his prosperous cabbage market and stalls. It's a dangerous world out there. I just hope to go back home already, said Hirsch, after having finished telling me about his cabbage business. Why are you coming to Ba Sing Si? I want to see the world, I answered with a smile. Well, you choose correctly, Hirsch said with a wide smile. What do you think I should do first? I asked. Well, first you need to exchange the money you have to local currency, and then well, I would recommend the springs of Ba Sing Si, Hirsch answered. Thanks, I smiled as I decided to take a walk around the cargo ship. Always happy to help. Hirsch smiled, waving me goodbye, what a great man. After walking for a while in the ship, I found a perfect place to meditate, that was the only way to enter the spirit realm. And that wasn't a guarantee. Arm was the only one with a free ticket to that place. For me, it was more a matter of it I was in tune just enough to pass. Closing my eyes, I let my breathing dictate my speed, and little by little, I felt something pulling me. In reaction to that, I opened my eyes. And well, I was no longer on the ship. I was in a green plane with a bunch of colored bunnies jumping around me. This wasn't supposed to be this easy I tried for years to come I meditated with the spirits of the moon. Why now? I asked myself trying to understand what was happening. Is the why or the how really important? A Cheshire cat said appearing in front of me. That said I went mad, maybe it was all the killings. I muttered, we're all mad here, I'm mad. You're mad, the unknown spirit smiled, and boy did it look weird seeing his smile almost make a full circle. Do you know why am I here? I mean why now? I asked the spirit. Hum, well does it really matter? The cat said in a low voice, you are here, because you wanted to be here. Or, did you not want to come? I did, I nodded. Then why ask questions? The cat purred his laugh with amusement teleporting behind me. Life doesn't always have the answer, sometimes you just have to go with the flow. Great, the cat was a hippie, I suppose. Want a tour? The cat inquired as he stretched against a tree. Yes, I nodded. Perfect. He purred, cutting his own head off with a swift motion and throwing it at me like a basketball. As his decapitated body kept on walking like nothing, his head spoke, follow my body, Jesus fuck, you're crazy. I didn't know if I wanted to laugh or run, maybe both, for now. Let's see how things go. The cat's head hummed before saying anything. I am not crazy. My reality is just different from yours, a very very good point, you are absolutely right, I tend to be until I'm not, the cat's head purred in answer, before it teleported to my shoulder, floating slightly above it, while he looked at me, with a long scrutinizing look, no wonder you are so in tune with the spirits, why didn't you say so before, say what, I inquired, having absolutely no idea what the cat was on about, that you're an empath, I'm a what now, I'll be honest with you I have no idea what you're talking about, I knew I wasn't an empath. I was very bad at reading people at least in the emotion department. Not many do the cat smiled, reattaching his head, you are very similar to us spirits. Negative emotions will scar you deeper than you think you will change around people that hate you. Until you learn how to control this unlikely gift, again I don't feel or haven't felt anything. I shook my head, not like that, oh really. The cat's smile disappeared, as his body grew in size, emanating a dark mist around him. Anger. Hate agony. I instinctively jumped backwards I was an easy prey here. I had no bending abilities in this realm. But if that fucker thought I would go down easy he would find that he was wrong. See? The cat smiled, immediately returning to his original creepy but small state. You felt it, didn't you? The anger, the hate, the agony, all singing in your mind. He then popped behind me, and now what do you feel? I blinked he was right, I had been ready to kill him or die trying a few seconds later. But now, all of that was gone, though I was still ready to at least defend myself. I mean isn't that a normal human reaction? I mean he did try to kill me. The cat purred and laughed at turning into smoke as he appeared on a nearby tree, to some extent yes. But you react to any emotion strongly. 
If you have many people around you that hate you, you will get more aggressive than usual. He paused to lick his hind leg clean. Though for you to replicate the same result we just saw you would need a lot of people close to you hating you, or fearing you. Don't take the spirit world as an example all feelings are massively boosted here. It's an awful place to have a breakup I tell you, any way to stop it? I asked. W well, as he was about to answer I felt a pull. It seems you are waking up, until next time this has been very entertaining. He purred as the darkness started to embrace me. Sir, are you okay? Sir, I'm up. I blinked in shock. Finally you were meditating for two weeks. Hirsch sighed. I thought you were dead, and no matter how many cabbages I threw at you, you still didn't flinch, and that usually works. Mother used to do it with me all the time. Two weeks, how is that shit even possible? I was there for like 10 minutes, thanks. No wonder I'm starving. Though not as much as I expected for two weeks. It took the ship two extra weeks to arrive at the coast, where I took a cart with Hirsch the cabbage trader. The ride in the car was super bumpy, and the seats were super uncomfortable. Who the fucks makes a seat out of stone? But at least the wind was pleasantly blowing by, and the cabbage guy was good company. The road cut across several farmlands and fields full of wheat and other crops. Weird animals his names I didn't know were scattered in the fields eating away the grass. Hirsch was still talking about the capital city of Ba Sing Si, and where to go, and I couldn't help but listen, after all, he was my sponsor to get in the city. You are going to love it. I will. I chuckled at him, though I wasn't paying too much attention, my mind was otherwise occupied with my time in the spirit world. I was apparently an empath, but on a supernatural level, meaning other people's emotions were able to influence my own emotions. Worst part was, I wasn't sure exactly what that entitled. But one thing was for sure, I was going to find a way to avoid such a thing. Look, Hirsch pointed out of the cart with excitement, Ba Sing Si. The walls were massive, no wonder they had survived so many sieges. This place was nearly impenetrable. Amazing, I muttered. By the time we arrived in the city it was a bit past noon in Ba Sing Si, thanks to Hirsch. I was able to get in without so much trouble. I couldn't help but smile. I remembered when I thought the Northern Water Tribe was a busy place. The streets in Ba Sing Si were ten times worse. It was unbelievable. The architecture was also different with Ba Sing Si having a more normal my old world way of building. With the buildings and houses beings all entirely made out of wooden rocks. With a sense of wonderment I started to explore the city. Getting a few stares from the people around. Thanks to my Water Tribe attire. Which added one thing to my to-do list, getting some new clothes. I kept on waking, exploring every little corner. But no matter what I saw or did, the events on the spirit realm were still haunting me. And not in a bad way, it was more like a mystery I wanted to solve, a puzzle I wanted to crack open. Maybe, it was time to meditate again. Only there I would get my answers. Though the prospect of dying because time fluctuates differently in the spirit realm was not exactly enticing. Fuck it, life is too short to swim in a sea of what-ifs. I will meditate. With a newfound resolve, I went to the nearest currency trading house, exchanging more than enough money to stay at any hotel for any given time. But I wasn't picky I basically picked the closest hotel to the coin house, and locked myself into the bathroom. Alright time to meditate again getting into position I sat controlling my emotions, my energy, and as the hours passed, I noticed nothing was happening. Why wasn't my meditation working? What had I done now wrong that I didn't do the last time? The only difference between meditations was that in one I was on a ship, and now I was in a hotel. Was the ship more spiritually woken or something? No, that was stupid beyond stupid. It had to be something else. The people. The ship barely had anyone inside no more than 20 people, and an 80% of them were the crew making that shit work. And if that crazy cat was right and emotions affect me well, being in Ba Sing Si was going to make my meditations impassable. Alright new plan, get out of the city, find a secluded spot, and get the cat to tell you more about this empath situation. Alright? I sighed as I rushed out of the hotel, getting a cart to ride me to the gates of Ba Sing Si. Getting out of Ba Sing Si was somehow harder than getting in which made no sense at all. Apparently, it was suspicious that I entered and left during the same day I had to explain to the guards I wanted to meditate out of the city, and that I would come back after my meditation was complete. They reluctantly accepted, letting me go, and marking my ideas pre-approved. After that I decided to get as far away from the city as possible, trying to find the most secluded place in the vicinity, which much to my liking was a small lake protected by a very small forest. Alright let's try this again. I sat in front of the lake as I could see the sun starting to go down, with its reflection shining in the lake. I focused once again in my breathing, and little by little, I drifted into a world of slumber as welcoming warmth invaded my body. Spirit realm I woke up to quiet, warmth and purring, groaning. I blinked away the lingering haze of sleep as I groggily sat up, stretching as I surveyed the area of the trees, the weird animals. There was no doubt, 
I was in the spirit realm. Well, aren't you a sight for sore eyes? A very familiar voice purred from my lap. So you figured out how to get in here. Impressive. I have some questions, I said. And I have some answers though I can't say they are the answers to the questions you have. But they are answers nonetheless. The cat smiled as he exploded in a puff of smoke reappearing in a nearby tree. Why am I capable of entering the spirit realm so easily? I mean not easy purse. But the avatar was supposed to be the only one or at least the one with the most access. Spiritually inclined perhaps. The cat said with a yawn. Some humans have that skill. Like that old guy that makes tea. Iro? He knew of Iro. Iro. It had to be Iro. That's the guy he makes a very very good catnip tea. It's to die for. The cat purred in delight as his head detached from his neck falling to the ground for dramatic purposes. I see. I nodded. At least now I had an answer to something. The avatar is a bit different, he uses Rava to enter this realm. For while merged with a human a spirit is forever bound to this realm. And so is the human, the cat purred, teleporting to my shoulder. Rava and Vatu, I had forgotten all about them. How can I enter this realm physically? I mean, well isn't that a hard question? The cat hummed while hopping around me in the air. Well I suppose for now you have but two options if you wish to do that one. Getting the avatar to open a portal for you or two, having a spirit to open a portal for you. Hum, I guess both are the same. I looked at the cat, can't you do it? I asked with hope. The cat laughed, no sorry, only spirits living in the physical world can. All I can do is send you back to the physical world. Is a one-way ticket you see if you enter. You have to find someone to send you back quite simple. Very well, I nodded in understanding. I had now acquired a new mission, finding a spirit to help me. Why do you want to come anyway? The cat purred his question in curiosity. It's not often humans want to dangle in the spirit world. I didn't have a straight answer for that. Was it the adventure? Or was it the chance of meeting Vatu? Or maybe one of those big ass elemental lion turtles? I don't know, but I'll know once I do it. I spend weeks in Bar Sing Si, fighting in the arenas every now and then, as I try to figure out where to find a spirit that wasn't the spirit of the moon to teleport me into the spirit world. If my powers of empathy god that sounds lame, were as bad as the spirit cat had said being in an environment where everyone feared me hated me or similar was going to be a problem for my meditation. I had need of a spirit that didn't have a fucking civilization around him. That Oran, and well I knocked him out the last time we saw each other, so it is pretty obvious I have to rule out that path. But where? My canon knowledge was much to my dismay Rusty. I remembered bits, the important bits, like on winning and important plot related stuff. Think Akira think. I muttered, walking in circles in my room while Crowley ate a big pile of corn like the greedy cute bastard he was. I had to make a recount of what spirits are meat in the real world. Let's see there was this panda spirit, that uncalmed down. Its name was High Bai, the panda lived close to a village. So that helps with the empath situation not many people around the Semlin village, if I recalled correctly. That was option one. As for option number two, it was a long distant memory from the comics Forgetful Valley. Situated outside the Fire Nation village of Hurrah, the Forgetful Valley had four mystical, crystal clear pools of water. It is said that on occasion, usually once a season, a wolf spirit will drink from one of the four pools. The valley is home to the Mother of Faces, whose presence is said can be discerned upon observing the various fauna and flora. They exhibit face-like markings when the spirit is nearby. Those were two options now the cons and pros of each one. For one, High Bai was a very peaceful spirit unless you try to fuck with the forest. And if I remember correctly, the panda was able to carry people in and out of the spirit realm. Now in the forgetful valley we have the Mother of Faces. The Mother of Faces it's said to be one of the most powerful and ancient spirits. Being older than Vatu and Rava 4, she has been around since the dawn of time, being responsible for giving faces to every living organism, bestowing plants, animals, and humans with them. No baby is born without her forming the face. The mother of faces is funny enough, also the mother of Ko, the face stealer. Quite ironic. Both options were delightfully enticing, but the forgetful valley was more interesting. Why? Well, she was ancient and could talk and well, Ursa the mother of Zuko was there and well. That was bound to make things very, very interesting. Well, it's settled, let's meet Ursa and one of the most powerful spirits in existence. Huh, maybe in retrospect, I should go to the almost non-threatening panda. Iro POV Zuko, my dear nephew, was livid. He had once again failed to capture the avatar. It was heartbreaking to see my nephew so lost, so out of touch with himself. He's going to the Earth Kingdom, Zuko growled. But the sources are not sure, don't rust things. I smiled, patting his back, life has its own reasons behind stuff. I have to Zuko muttered tears rolling down his eyes, he wanted so much to be loved by his father, to regain the honor he never lost. I don't know what to do how to end this. I sighed. Life can be painful and messed up, I'm not going to lie. It gets complicated at the worst of times, and sometimes you have no idea where to go or what to do. 
I paused, taking a deep breath, remembering my actions when Luten died. My sins, lots of times you just let yourself get lost dropping into a wide open, huge abyss of misdirection, darkest and eventually regret. But that's why we have to keep trying. We have to push through all that hurts us, work past all the memories that are haunting us. After all, is the things that hurt us, the ones that make us grow. He burned me, Zuko cried. I have to do this if I ever want father to forgive me. You must find yourself before capturing the Avatar, before regaining what you never lost. I hugged Zuko. Find myself, I already know who I am. Zuko chuckled in pain. And besides, how does one even do that? Somehow, someday, you'll find it. The balance between whom you wish to be and whom you need to be. But for now, you simply have to be satisfied with who you are. Don't change who you are to please others be the best version of yourself, if only you could understand that already. That the one that needs to change, is the foolish of my little brother. Thanks uncle, Zuko sighed, wiping his tears away. Now, what do you say we head to the Earth Kingdom? I smiled. I knew he still didn't understand what I had told him, or what I had tried to. But it didn't matter I would be with him by his side until he did. I was not going to fail him like I like with my dear Luten. That sounds like a trip worth having with T. I chuckled. Then it's settled the avatar will fall next time, Zuko stated, all signs of emotional turmoil gone. He was back to his angry self. Very well I'll go pack my tea. I nodded, and for some unexpected reason, the image of young Akira sitting in front of the lake appeared in my head. It had been over a month since I had a cup of tea with him. Was this a message from the spirits? Perhaps it meant, I would soon cross paths with my tea buddy. How delightful. It took me a few days to start a well thought plan to get to Forgetful Valley without getting lost. From Ba Sing Si, I started my journey, jumping from village to village, with the help of various merchants. But merchants could only take me so far. With the Fire Nation controlling a big piece of the land, it was nearly impossible to travel directly to where I wanted to go. Reason why, I had decided to stay in the Serpent Pass in clothes for the night, before embarking into the Fire Nation territory. I also had to buy some Fire Nation clothes to avoid unnecessary fights. The inn I found was a very old one, with the edge of my door worn from use though most of the wood was smooth as if especially polished. Taking my key, I opened the door and found myself alone in a simple yet big room about 20 feet by 16. As I looked around I noticed the unpolished wood floor was bare but clean, showing the owners were quite clean. On the left side, there was a long tiny window at the top of the wall, which let through some light. In the middle of the room was the bed with the common hay mattress. Not bad, I muttered as Crowley flew to the bed. The only thing in the room besides my bed was a stove with a set of matches to cook and a little bucket that were located on the floor against the far wall. Maybe the bucket was to do my human needs who knows. Alright let's see I said as I opened the map to see where I had to go next. One wrong choice and I would be months behind what I wanted to do. Hurrah was a village that well it wasn't on the maps thanks to Ozai and his hate for Ursa. But I knew it was around the outskirts of the Fire Nation's original territory. Perhaps it was best to tackle the spirit realm by first going to High Bai. I was after all a few days away from the panda. But I had no real idea where the Mother of Faces truly was. What do you think Crowley? Should I insist on the Mother of Faces or try with the Panda? I asked, mostly to myself. There was also the point I had no guarantee the Mother of Faces or High Bai would actually carry me to the spirit world. Fuck it. I will try and find the village someone in the Fire Nation is bound to know. I decided, closing my map, choosing to stick to the plan. From Serpent Pass? I would take a cart to the Great Divide, and from there I would walk to a Fire Nation colony close to it, staying there for the night. And from that point it should be pretty easy to get to the Fire Nation territory. The original one I mean. Alright time to literally hit the hay. I chuckled as I jumped to the bed, waking a now very angry raven. Sorry pal, I didn't see you there. I lied every now and then, I like to bother my little friend. Next morning the next morning. I had the inn owner find me a ride to the Great Divide, and surprisingly enough, he did so in under a minute. His name was Deku, and was the only cart in a hundred miles. I could only hope he, like many other Dekus, didn't have the hobby of breaking every bone on his body. Ah, uh, Akira. Deku my Yuba I mean cart rider said loudly, don't forget my payment. The man smiled, extending his open hand, waiting for the money. Here you go. I chuckled, giving him what I had discussed with the inn owner. Immediately after I scrambled onto the cart and discovered that it was full of dirt and hay that served as the seats. The first few hours of the ride were, well, bumpy is a fucking understatement to put simple I would need to water heal my balls after this. If I ever wanted to procreate in the future, and not only that, but the rocks were basically beating me up with the hay scratching the crap out of my skin, 
But I guess the day was pleasantly nice, so it wasn't all bad. The road was dull, with nothing but rocks and dirt in every direction, not that I expected much. The map hinted this part of the trip was going to be lame. Maybe I needed to find a flying bison in Legend of Korra. They didn't seem to be extinct, and unless Appa was somehow able to clone himself, there were others around the world. So, how long is this trip? I asked trying to entertain myself. About 10 hours more, Deku smiled proudly. I know the fast route. God I miss cars I see. Well, I suppose the only thing I can do right now is relax and suffer through this hellish ride. As a POV Zuzu was after the Avatar, but like everything he did, he would fail and I would once again prove to be victorious, to be superior, to be better, to be worthy of the admiration of my nation, my father and my mother. To show her she misplaced her love and support on Zuko, a little good for nothing. But first, I had to eliminate a prepubescent avatar, and a little rumor that had been going on for quite a while. Akira that was the name of the pathetic attempt from the water tribe to scare the mighty fire nation. Killing Zhao was not an accomplishment, that wasn't even a challenge. But the rumors of him being the justice incarnated too laughably might I add, make us pay. Utterly pathetic. Killing the avatar was of course, first, but destroying this little hope the water tribe had was also on my list. I hope you are as good as they sell you Akira. I smiled, otherwise destroying their hope won't be any fun. After a very painful trip, I was dropped in the Great Divide. Arca the Great Canyon of the Avatar world, from here things were easier for me to an extent, of course. Walking all the way to the Fire Nation colony was hard. It was a long way, and the harsh environment of this pseudo-deserted land made things harder than they should. But where is life there is water, and while it wasn't in great amounts, I was slowly gathering water from the environment to help me on my way. Let's see, I hummed as I opened the map to check my location. If I was correct I was around 200 miles away from the colony I wanted to reach, and that would take me weeks. So it was time to change my approach to a more creative one. I had two options one, using my flying technique to literally bend my own ass towards the colony as fast as I could, or walk. Alright, time to fly it is. Normally, I would freeze small parts of my body to maximize water usage, technique and flexibility. But right now, all I wanted was speed, so I had to be a projectile, and fast one at that. With that in mind, I created a layer of ice in my shoes, collar, hands and knees, and started to bend my way up to the sky. The higher the better once I was close to the clouds. I started to gather all the water around, creating a sphere big enough to fit three people my size around me. With the water sphere ready, I moved on to phase two freezing the first layer of water to make the sphere hard on the outside, and also make the water harder to evaporate. Once that was ready, I started to spin the sphere with me inside as fast as I could. My idea was simple. I wanted to use the momentum of the centrifugal force to short the distance between the colony and me, by shooting me like a fucking bullet into their direction. Ready Crowley? Cool. Wote I don't understand calls, but that sounded like a yeah. Two hours later in hindsight I should have known this was an awful idea at first it worked perfectly. But holding such a big body of water so high in the air was taxing by body and mind. It was painful. I could feel every fiber of my body screaming in pain as I slowly but surely lost altitude. Fuck. I said as I struggled to keep the construct of water in place sweat dropping like I was doing the hardest workout ever. I hate myself so much right now. Having enough of the torturous bending exercise I had put myself into, I let gravity do his thing as I slowly started to fall into the abyss, taking a deep breath. I pushed myself out of the ball, making sure to unfreeze the thing. Holy. I was gasping for air as I slowly hovered to the ground. If I had known that shit was going to be so taxing, I would have picked another option. Or thought of another way. I am never doing that again not in a long time anyway. Note to self, make sure to train stamina, while holding large bodies of water for a prolonged period of time. Core. Quote, I turned to see Crowley. He was scared and angry at me. Hair can't blame the little guy, as I was about to try and pet him midair. I saw a carriage move a few miles away, and ever further away, I was able to see the colony. I was one step closer to get where I wanted. Iro POV my dear nephew was anxious. The fact the young avatar had a flying mount, didn't help his mental state of always being one step behind. Train me, Zuko asked. I need something to pass the time, he added. You already have the basis of a good fire bender, I smiled. All he needed to do was change the fuel of his fire from anger to love. All you need is to find within you the enlightenment we all so desperately seek. I don't have time to try and enter a world of fantasies inside my head. Zuko shouted. I need to be stronger, how can meditating help me with that? I won't ever get peace until I capture the avatar. Oh dear nephew, 
I smiled at him, it isn't by getting out of the world that we become enlightened, but by getting into the world by getting so tuned in that we can ride the waves of our existence, and never get tossed, because we become the waves that we transcend the limitations our mind puts upon of. Enlightenment wasn't about having all the answers is was about accepting you didn't have them all, by accepting the world and its beauty. Only then you will become what you are destined to be. The fire lord your father and I can't be. If I meditate will you train me after Zuko sighed? If you really meditate I don't see why not. I smiled, hoping one day he would understand my teachings. I will make you a cup of tea, to help you relax. You really love your tea, Zuko chuckled, showing for a brief moment the real him, the man I knew he could be. Well, I winked at him. No matter where you are in the world, you are at home when tea is served. I said as I started to walk towards the kitchen to make the tea I had offered, perhaps today I would try that new blend I read in my tea book, it would be an adventure to experience with my dear nephew, a new tea together. Home, Zuko smiled, I like the sound of that, um POV, you don't like the way the world works. Akira's voice echoed in my head, then change it, you have the power to do so. But as long as you are this weak your voice will be drowned in the million cries of pain of the people that you failed to save, he was right. I had escaped my destiny once. Next time show me how strong your resolve is. Um, he was right. I couldn't complain about how the things in the world were going, if I myself couldn't do anything about it. Um, are you okay? Katara asked, putting her hand on my shoulder. Yeah, just thinking I smiled. Is this about Katara paused? Akira she added the name with a bit of anger. He was right, I was happy she was mad at him to some extent. But Akira was right, if I wasn't happy with the world I was in, it was my duty to make it better. I was the avatar and even if I wasn't it was my duty. That still didn't give him the right to punch you, Katara fumed. Or freeze me but whatever, nobody cares about little old Sokka, Sokka added. After taking a few hours to cool down my hurting body, I walked the remainder of the way. That was around 10 miles, arriving at the outskirts of the village before the night started, hiding on a bush. Once I was comfortably situated into the bush, I decided to survey the area, before entering. This was after all enemy territory. The village in question was surrounded on all sides by hills and a very expansive forest on the back, but there was something more, something familiar. So using my water sense, I managed to feel a small river that ran through the forest on the back there was water lots of it. No wonder it felt familiar. Bordering the forest, there was a massive wooden, rectangular wall that separated the forest from the town. Meaning if push came to shove that was my best possible escape route. As for Untants, the settlement had only one, a single gate at the front. My clothes said I was part of the Earth Kingdom. And my powers would say I was part of the Water Tribe, and neither of those were welcomed in Fire Nation settlements. So I had only one option sneaking inside the village. Alright? I nodded, knowing that was the best possible way to get in, without starting a fight, and considering right now bending hurts. Thanks to my stupid idea, it was best if I played it safe, at least for the moment. Using my water sense, I located all the guards around and using that information, I moved around their lines of sight, avoiding them easy. But now I had to climb the walls of the village, working through the pain. I created ice claws on my hands and feet and started to climb the wall. The exact moment the guards weren't looking, taking the 30 second blind spot they had every 5 minutes. God damn I'm all sore. I muttered landing on the other side of the wall, behind a house. Now it was time for phase 2. Stealing clothes, if I wanted to continue this adventure. I had to look like I was part of the Fire Nation. Deciding it was perhaps divine providence. I climbed to the second floor window of the house I had landed near after climbing the wall. And using the humidity of the environment, I forced the window open as I silently entered the house, praying whoever lived here was my size, or at least close. Let's see, I hummed checking all the drawers of the room I had just entered, and thank god the clothes were somewhat my size. They were a bit bigger, but nothing I couldn't wear. After that, I decided to take a backpack that was in a corner inside a walk-in closet, changing it with my Water Nation one. Putting all my stuff inside, including my dear pet, after I of course opened a big hole for him to breath and stick his head out. Alright, I think I look native enough. I chuckled, feeling a bit like Link entering houses and stealing shit. Maybe I should start shouting higher while I take stuff. Cool. Quote well, enough is enough, it was time to get out of this house. I wanted to sleep, and I still had yet to find an inn. So taking a deep breath, with my new outfit ready, I got out of the house from where I came from, and as if I was part of their community, I started to walk among them, chanting in my head, don't be suspicious. The village was beautiful, filled with grandiose and brilliantly extravagant architecture. The Fire Nation was really ahead of their time in architecture. Where can I find a coin trade house? I asked a random villager. Just keep walking, you'll see the sign the random villager answered, telling me I was going the right way. And just like he said, I found the trade houses and all it took was a few minutes. 
Fire coin trade ain't side. I noticed they only had one trade option, Earth Kingdom currency to Fire Nation currency, and that they were scamming the heck out of me or anyone trying to exchange money. But for now I would get what I could. Even after losing 30% of my cash, I still had more than enough for the trip. Any ideas where I can find a good inn? I asked with a smile to the lady behind the counter. Go to the center, the Pagoda Inn is one of the best, the scammer. I mean lady said. Thanks. I nodded as I left the coin house. Not before taking a map of the village that was conveniently located in the door. Following the map, I found my way to the settlement center, finding a very unique structure, the famous three pagodas located in the center of the village. The central pagoda was the largest, while the other two identical ones to its sides were smaller. Each of the pagodas was three stories tall, and had a yellow exterior with slanted black rooftops. Taking a quick glance around, I could see other smaller but similarly designed structures surrounding the pagodas. I need to invent a camera, no Akira. You won't knowing how to use a camera, doesn't give you the knowledge to build one, but one can dream. These amazing buildings were all centered around a wide and spacious square, at which many of the town's paved stone streets culminated, including the one that had driven me there. Around the buildings, many shops, restaurants and inns were based around the square, allowing the square to thrive as a bustling commercial and social center, reason why it was full of people. Close to one of the smallest pagodas, there was the inn I had been recommended, quite the creative name it wasn't. Pagoda and walking across the square, I noticed various firebender doing street shows, like breathing fire, juggling things on fire, yeah, those things kinda lost their charm in this world. As I entered the inn, a massively tall man smiled at me. Welcome to Pagoda Inn. Are you looking for a room? The man maybe 8 foot tall man inquired. Yes, I nodded. Iro POV I had made a terrible mistake, after we had arrived in the Earth Kingdom. I had confused the very white jade bush, with the legendary white dragon bush. Thanks to my rookie mistake I had poisoned myself. I think these berries can cure me. I pointed as Zuko walked in circles around me. Or blind me. I'm not sure if they are Bakui berries. Or the deadly Makael berries. I really needed to refresh my memory with all this beautifully deadly fauna in this world. No. Zuko shouted as I tried to grab the berries. Drinking tea from the mysterious plant is the reason you are ill. It's a very stupid idea to try a cure. That with another unknown. Well, he had a point. But it's not like we had many options. We had no medicine of any kind in the ship we had stolen from Zhao's fleet, which we couldn't use anymore, because my not-so-dear niece was hunting us. If we head to the Earth Kingdom, and we are discovered, we will be executed, I stated, and if the Fire Nation soldiers around manage to capture us, we will be turned over to Azala, Earth Kingdom it is, Zuko answered without hesitation, and I couldn't blame him Azala was cruel. Beyond human comprehension, she was a monster, a monster my little brother nurtured. Destroying and damaging any humanity she had in her, while praising her monstrous side. Creating what she is today. I could have stopped him, many times I thought about killing him. With that I could have saved Zuko from this pain, and Azala from this destiny. But I didn't. In the end, monsters like Azala and Ozai were nothing. The true terrors in this world were people like me. The ones with power who saw suffering. Who heard the screams of a hundred generations echoing for miles around them, and still did nothing. But I had finally resolved to do what had to be done. The easy path is not the one that leads to victory. Sometimes it only leads to damnation. Killing Ozai, my little brother would solve nothing, if I was the one doing it. With Zuko the cycle of hate would end, the endless fire of destruction would finally be put down. Are you okay uncle? Zuko asked worriedly. Yes dear nephew. Let's go. I nodded as I slowly stood up. Now let's start this journey. Zuko POV sometimes my uncle would feel like the smartest person in the whole world. Full of wisdom and knowledge and sometimes he was just a big baby. How could he be so naive? Making tea with an unknown plant, he could have killed himself. He was careless sometimes. It will take us two days to arrive at the nearest settlement, I inwardly cursed. Don't worry dear nephew, I have more than enough time. He didn't know that. Why can't he take his own life seriously? Doesn't he know I can't lo? We have to find people soon we don't know how fast that poison you drank works. I sighed, for now capturing the avatar could wait for now. The map we have shows there is a farming settlement nearby. If we walk non-stop through some roads, we should be there by the night. If we followed the normal route there was a big chance no. I won't think about it. Because it won't happen. Very well. He smiled, I'm sure everything will turn out just fine. Just follow your gut and guide me. Hum. I chuckled, my gut thinks we have to go this way. I pointed at the map. Akira POV it was the evening of my fifth day in the Fire Nation village. Today the winds howled outside. As I drank a nice cup of burning desire. A Fire Nation drink famous around these parts. Thanks to the winds, the tavern's walls creaked worryingly. 
but nobody seemed to mind. As I continued to drink my alcoholic beverage, a few men and women entered and exited the tavern, spreading out across candlelit tables and craving steamy drinks and hot food. Why was I still here? Well, my body and spirit were in need of rest, thanks to my earlier stunt, and I decided to get that rest here but my stay was coming to an end tonight. This week I had gathered all the supplies I needed to make this journey, at least until the next city. You all right there, friend? A deep voice asked, snapping me out of my train of thought. With a smile I look up to see Moro, the owner of the Phoenix's Heart Tavern, standing across the bar from me, polishing a mug against his worn-out apron. You look like you need to talk. Huh, every bartender is incredibly friendly here. Neat. The old man smiled as he pulled a bottle off the shelf behind him, proceeding to pour a new drink into my empty glass. If there's something troubling you, feel free to share. That's what we bartenders are for, he chuckled. Nothing much. I chuckled, just planning my journey. Nothing deep or emotional. Well, if you need someone to hear you out, you know where to find me. Morrow smiled as he walked to attend another customer. But I stopped him as I started to talk. Actually, do you know a good cart around here? I wanted to actually sleep on the ride, not suffer. Morrow hung before asking, where do you want to go? To the port, I answered. Morrow smiled, yes, I have a guy. Hey kiddo, a random man sat beside me. I hear you needed a ride, Jesus Christ. When and how these two communicated or exchanged the information I was just giving. Yes, I do. Old con here is the best around, Morrow stated. If you want a fast and comfortable ride, I vouch for him very well. I want to leave tonight or tomorrow morning. I informed the rider. Tomorrow morning, con winked. I have to let the wife now I'll be off for a few days. Works for me. I chuckled. Well, if you need me I'll be polishing the mugs in the back, Morrow said going to the back of his establishment. After one month of painfully slow sea travel, I had finally arrived at the Fire Nation. It took a lot of money and illegal activities to do so like for example, sneaking in the ship because I had no papers, and there was no fucking way I was going to back down after being so close. But none of that mattered. I was finally here in the jaws of the lion. The prospect was both scary and exhilarating. I still had a lot to travel. But it would not hurt to take it easy for the time being, and enjoy the scenery, until I know for sure where the mother of faces really is. For now I was going to enjoy my stay in Shujing. The place was beautiful, it almost seemed designed to be pleasant and welcoming, like a trap, but it was most likely a place for old warriors to retire, after all, it was incredibly peaceful. And I could feel it maybe the empath thing was actually a thing with me now. Great. Cool. What, what up buddy you found anything? I chuckled. Crawley for one was excited to meet new places and angry I didn't cook like Sakura did ungrateful little as I walked around the plains with Crowley. A canal of water got my attention. It was mesmerizing. The crystal clear water with the occasional fish or turtle. Swimming beneath the water lilies that grew near the canal banks. I followed mindlessly the road along the water into a particularly unique building, making me realize why I had a sense of déjà vu here. Perched high on a cliff, there was a beautiful castle overlooking the faraway town of Shu Jing, and that castle was no other than the famous Piandao's castle. With a smile I used my water sense to feel the entire building. It took me a few seconds, being that the building was massive, and getting information from so far away was hard, but now I had a better idea what to expect. The castle had around 14 bedrooms, with two gardens one on the front and one of the back. Inside there were five people, all of them separated in different rooms. Maybe I could get some sword training with the guy god knows I'm not the best hand-to-hand -hand combat. It could be an interesting way to utilize my time off my plan at least until I find where in the heck is Forgetful Valley. And there is always the chance he knows where my destination is, otherwise I would be very disappointed in the intellectual prowess of the White Lotus. As the POV rumors were spreading far and wide, that little hope of the Water Tribe was traveling around the world. Many think he's just looking for something, but I wasn't stupid he was heading towards the Fire Nation. How I found out was simple the rumors had casually spread on a straight line towards the Fire Nation one day he was riding towards the Great Divide, and the next no one knew where he was. Well... I did. There was a Fire Nation colony a few hundred miles from the Great Divide, and it was much too convenient he disappeared that close to it, meaning he had infiltrated the sheeps. But for now I would allow this, after all. It would be much more fun when father asked me personally to kill the vermin under our noses. For now, I would let him play his game while I played mine. They were here, Ty Lee stated in her ever cheerful and annoying demeanor. A few days back three at much, Mai added. It's alright they will eventually meet their end at our hands. 
I smiled. After all, Zuzu, Iroh, the Avatar and his peons would all inevitably fall under my might. Any news about the water guy? Tai Li inquired. For now he isn't a concern. Akira POV after knocking at the castle a few times and getting no answer. I decided to meditate it had been quite a while. Since I talked with that crazy cat after all. Taking a deep breath I let the world around me disappear. Like the wind of spring taking the cold away. But this time something felt different, something felt foreign, darker and much, much more inhuman, intriguing. A voice thundered inside my very core, shaking my stance like an earthquake. The voice seemed to come from everywhere around me. The feeling was darker than anything I had ever felt. Inwardly cursing in shock I opened my eyes to confirm my suspicions. I wasn't in the forest I would normally get after meditating I was inside a tree with a dark entity. Fuck, I cursed in front of no other than fucking Vatu, wondering how in the fuck was this happening. It was supposed to be impossible to enter his prison. How can a human so in tune with the spirit world be so ignorant? Vatu chuckled in amusement. And well, this wasn't what I had been expecting at all. Fear not, I don't want to kill you yet. The evil spirit bent down ponderously, probably trying to figure out how to deal with me. You are Vatu right? I asked trying to make conversation as I struggled to force my spirit back to my body to no avail. Maybe it was all the negative energy pouring out of him. If before I wasn't sure about the empire thing, I was sure as hell now. With Vatu, I felt his anger, his hatred and even surprisingly his fear. I am Vatu answered in a low tone as he leaned close to my face, stopping a few inches away from me as if a barrier stopped him. But you already knew that otherwise. Why would you reek of fear reek of fear? How I wasn't afraid, not totally. But I knew I was screwed either way. Here I had no bending and the bastard was several dozen meters taller than me. Why am I here? I managed to articulate, and empath well. That explains a lot, Vatu said in annoyance as if I had spoiled his fun as to why are you here I have no idea. But a question popped in my head. Why didn't I feel fear? The guy was beyond striking league was it because he couldn't hurt me, and his feelings were shouting that at me. Taking a deep breath I decided to bet on that. I was screwed either way if my hunch failed, you can't hurt me can't you? I asked. Vatu chuckled in amusement as he tapped the invisible seal around him with his tail before saying, no for now well, not that I don't enjoy talking with you, I said, letting out the breath I didn't know I was holding, in relief I had drifted outside his seal, but I have to go wait Vatu called out, I have a deal you might like, before Vatu was even able to offer his deal, I felt the pull back to the real world, and I was glad I did, whatever diabolical idea he had I wanted no part in it, young man, are you lost, the question startled me back to reality, it was the master Piandao, who had walked out of his castle waking me up from the spirit world. He was dressed in an expensive red and black kimono with gold lines on the edges, with a sheathed sword thrust through his obi, his eyes deep and kind. Note to self don't meditate ever again. I was actually looking for you, I answered, interested in the way of the sword. Then, Piandao said with an amused tone. I nodded in answer. The old master stood silent for a second, giving me a long scrutinizing look, before he motioned for me to follow him. Come here, young man. As I followed him, a man approached the master, aiming me with curiosity and surprise. Master Piandao, are you finally getting a new student? Master Piandao barely showed any emotion as he looked at me. Well, that depends on him. Hey kid, the man extended his hand giving a handshake. The name is Fat, and just a heads up, Master Piandao turns down almost every aspirant. So don't expect much. After that little interaction, the old master took me to a room and asked, why are you looking to train? This was a test, one that Sokka had passed thanks to his humility. Was I humble? Not really. I knew I was strong. But if I said that he would outright reject me, so I had to be humble. I need to get stronger, I answered, realizing if I had to be humble, I would have to be truthful about my weaknesses. I have no idea how to properly use a sword. That wasn't a lie. I was good at bending, but not at the normal aspect of fighting. If you have me, I would like to learn how to be a proper swordsman under your teachings. Pianda looked at me, showing not emotion for a long minute as if trying to see any sense of falsehood behind my words. Very well, I will teach you how to be a proper warrior in the ways of the sword. I will be honored to learn with you. I smiled. You will do more than learning how to use a sword. A real swordsman needs more than a blade to be one with his blade, Piandao stated. You will learn to take care of the garden. You will practice calligraphy. And you will use a dull blade. Until you're ready to wield a real blade. He paused. Do you still want to learn? Well, that was sure a lot of work. But for now it was better than doing nothing. Yes, I will do what I must very well. Piandao nodded. Go with that. He will instruct you what to do in the garden. Iro POV Zuko was angry with our situation from royalty to beggars. It really affected him a lot. Some coin for this old man. I asked with a wide smile as people passed by dropping coins in my hat. 
This is humiliating we are royalty, people should be giving us what we want. Zuko hissed in anger, showing his ignorance to the outside world. They will, if we ask nicely. I smiled. I knew Zuko would soon learn the harsh realities of this war, and it would forever change him for the better. After all, he was now a victim of his father's regime like everyone else. We don't need any kindness, Zuko said, practically growling. We won't once we have the avatar. Sir, can I have a coin? A little girl asked, approaching us. Sure. I smiled, giving her part of what I had collected. Thanks. The girl smiled, beaming with newfound happiness. That already made this beggar thing worth it. We don't have anything, why are you wasting what little we have? Zuko asked after the girl left skipping with a happy smile. Shocked I had given part of the money we had collected. Love and kindness are never wasted, dear nephew. They always make a difference. They bless the one who receives them, and they bless you, the giver. I smiled at him. Besides, no one has ever become poor by giving. That only makes you richer where it really matters. Zuko sighed. Well, she did look hungry. I hope no one takes that money from her. And there it was, the kind young man I believed in. I'm sure she will be fine. I smiled. Does that actually make a difference? Zuko suddenly asked. Tomorrow she will be hungry once again. Are you actually helping? I looked at him for a second, before replying. Dear nephew, there's no such thing as a small act of kindness. Every kind act we do creates a ripple of goodness with no logical end. We don't have to be kind. Because it will change something we have to be kind because it's who we are, I suppose, Zuko sighed. And sometimes you can accomplish by kindness what you cannot by force. I winked at him. I'm sure the Avatar will go with me to the Fire Nation if I ask nicely, Zuko replied with a low chuckle. Maybe not now. I laughed. Little by little I was leaving a mark on my dear nephew. And soon he would learn that the purpose of life is not to be happy, not completely. The real purpose of life was to be useful, to be honorable, to be compassionate, to be kind, to be fair, to have it make some difference that you have lived and lived well. We are all here to serve, one way or another. Uncle, do you think we will capture the Avatar anytime soon? Zuko asked, his head low. Only time will tell. No, I knew for a fact you would never capture the Avatar for your destiny was another. But unfortunately you aren't ready to hear it. Yet. Two weeks later so far, my training with Pian Dao has been fun, even the gardening part that I was pretty sure he put me to that just because he doesn't hire any landscapers. Calligraphy was a breeze. The one I was having troubles with was with the way of the sword. You are not used to weapons, are you? Master Piando asked with an amused tone, stopping our daily spa. I am not, I chuckled. You are treating a spa as if it was a bending fight, Master Piando said with a frown. And I couldn't do anything but stared at him in mild shock. Your stances are all bare-handed water-bending stances. The old man smirked at me, as he went on about my flaws in hand-to-hand slash weapon combat. A bit risky against armed opponents, when you are not using bending. You would do well learning a few sword stances. Since when I asked after a second. Since the day I met you, Pianda replied, showing little to no emotion. I don't care where you come from that doesn't matter to the way of the sword. If I had had any doubts about him or his motives. I was now completely sold this man was awesome on my list. So I have to forget about my stances I muttered. No, Piandao shook his head, you need to insert them. Like a good condiment alone is nothing. But with a good base can be glorious, a food metaphor, neat. So I have to complement my base with what I know not the other way around, meaning I would have to form a really good base with my sword, and then I would improve them with my water style. Exactly, Piandao nodded. Sounding pleased, my style has been honed by taking bits from every culture I had encountered. The aggressive side of the Fire Nation, the solid defense of the Earth Kingdom, the motions of the Water Tribe, and the flexibility of the Air Nomads. I see, I nodded. I will give you the bases up to you to build something beautiful with it. Or let it die like a rose in winter, Master Piandao added, as he left the training yard. Two weeks later the days passed with me training and losing souls with Piandao over and over and over again. It was humiliating, but at the same time I was happy to be learning. After a talk that day, things seemed to click better for me. It had become easier to learn. You have improved tremendously, Piandao said. Pleased with my development, you are ready ready. For what? For what? You have learned the basis of the sword, it's time for you to make that something of your own. That was it a month of training. I mean, yes, I did learn but a month. Isn't this a bit fast? I inquired with uncertainty. Learning how to swing a blade correctly takes no time. Piandao smiled. Becoming a great swordsman now that takes decades. I know it seems fast, but if I keep teaching you, you will only copy me the sword. The user and the style have to be unique, if you have to truly be a warrior. I suppose that's right, I chuckled. If you want you can stay, but I know you have other things to do, Piandao said giving me a map. What you seek is in there. I took the map with a childlike sense of excitement and smiled. Inside there was the location I had been looking for in his library. Every time I asked you said you didn't know, and so did Fat. I eyed him with a chuckle. 
I wanted to finish your training first. An incomplete base is worse than no base at all, Pianda stated. Thanks for everything, Aunt POV finding an Earthbender master was harder than I had originally anticipated. With Bumi out of the picture, things had complicated. I had to find a master that listened before striking. A master on the ways of the neutral Jing. Bumi stated that the neutral Jing is the key to Earthbending. The art of the neutral Jing apparently involves listening, though seemingly doing nothing, and waiting for the right moment to strike. And it did make sense for when in combat, earthbenders are usually more stationary than other benders, waiting for their opponent to come to them, while standing their ground and meeting their opponent's attacks head on, before delivering a deadly counterattack of their own. I'm sure your master will be huge. Sokka smiled. Big muscles, big power. Muscles mean nothing in bending Sokka, Katara sighed. Katara is right, bending is more about the spirit and less about the body, I added. Well, I still think your master will be huge, Sokka shrugged. Tough POV, I was the best of the best. Unmatched, undefeated, and I ran out of uns. But it doesn't matter, I'm awesome. These idiots in the arena keep trying to take my throne, but none of them will ever even manage to make me sweat. In the arena, I was a goddess. But at home, I was, I felt worthless. The shame that tormented me was all the more corrosive for coming from the people that were supposed to see value in me, and yet saw nothing but the surface of what I was. I didn't know why I felt so tainted and worthless and wrong with them only that I did, and that whenever I was in the arena I felt partly whole. In the arena I wasn't the poor blind girl everyone felt pity for, no. I was the blind bandit, a powerful and independent earthbender, a force to be reckoned with. Lady Beefong is time for your bath, one of the servants said. I think I can take this one myself. I was blind not stupid. Why can't they see that? I'm afraid I can't let you do that. There are many dangers during bath time once again. I had been refuted immediately I hate this. The same day, Master Piandao said I was ready to master the way of the sword on my own. I left. I had now a map guiding me to where I had to be. Today like any other day in the surprisingly cozy fire nation, the sun shone bright in a cloudless sky every now and then a bird would fly by, but besides that nothing much. The fire nation was calm and beautiful, so much at times it would make me forget about the war altogether. So far I really couldn't complain besides my meeting with Vatu, things were going awesome for me. I even had the luck to find a merchant group after I left the island that offered to take me there, if I escorted them all the way there, and while I was mostly inclined to outright reject the offer, I decided to do otherwise and accept it. That way, I would be seen as considerably less suspicious to the eyes of others, soldiers especially. I wanted to avoid fights for the time being. As the caravan advanced through one nearby towns, a group of soldiers stopped us, nothing serious, just routine checks. I knew that much. With a long scrutinizing look, I studied the orderly row of the soldiers in front of my ride, with their helmets gleaming in the sunlight. There were about two dozen men, on foot, in the rear guard, all in identical red and black armors, some carrying long spears and swords. One of them had a slightly different armor, and if I had to take a guess he was their squad captain, or something similar, not only that, but he was the one doing all the talking, showing he had in a way authority. I was ready to literally rain hell on them, but I had to wait, if they didn't stop us. It would save me a lot of trouble, if possible a low profile was best for me. Everything seems good, the captain stated, eyeing the paperwork the merchant had given him, be on your way. I inwardly cheered the fact that I didn't have to kill them all, which while easy it would have made the trip a living hell. Oz I for one, would want my ass on a silver platter. Without any more interruptions, the caravan continued with the trip, eventually taking us in the depths of a forest plague with thieves. That or really human-like monkeys methodically following us all I knew thanks to my water sense, was that we were being followed. I had two options in how to deal with this situation 1. Using my bending to take them all saving the caravan, and revealing my identity. 2. Using only what Piandao had taught me keeping my low profile. I suppose I'm about to see how much improvement with the sword I had obtained after that crash course Master Piandao gave me. And here we go 3, 2, 1. As if on cue. A man with a very Assassin's Creed look leaped from one of the trees, his arms and legs spreading wide to keep the balance in the air. The man in question landed with ease on one of the mounted men, beside one of the many carriages in a deadly crouch. His weight, combined with the gravitational force of the landing, immediately brought both man and horse to the ground in a painful mixture of a neigh, a cry and a loud crash, blood splattering everywhere. The poor man the thief had landed on was now dead in a pool of blood on the ground, while his horse was running away in fear. The man stood up unsheathing his blade and pointing at us with it and said, Surrender all your belongings and we will let you live. Crowley eyed me and the man, and simply skipped away to an empty hay bed, like saying you get in way too much trouble, I'm going to sleep. I rolled my eyes at Crowley, as I kept on observing the situation, wondering what the merchant would pick his merchandise or his life, we won't give you anything freeloaders. Oh, his merchandise it is, very well. 
The man snapped his fingers, and more Assassin's Creed lookalikes forms jumped down from nearby trees. The assailants all looked identical, with slight differences, like height and weight. But besides that it was like a fucking Assassin's Creed convention out here, kill them all, the man ordered. I sighed as I rushed in to help the caravan, if push came to shove. I would use water bending to kill them all. So this wasn't much of a tough situation for me. Taking a step forward, the man tried to cut me with his blade. I surprisingly found myself easily countering his attack and cutting his throat. Getting my clothes dirty with the blood the now dead man had spilled on my clothes, killing with a weapon sure is way messier. I muttered as I continued to field test my new skills. As a POV Akira was starting to make this game fun like a mouse getting into a lion's den. He was making this game so interesting that for a moment, a brief moment at that, I wanted to stop chasing Zuzu, and the Avatar, just to kill him. I had no idea what his motives were at this point, nor I actually cared. But he was playing a game I was known to always win. I always catch my prey. But the question now was where was him? I had unfortunately lost track of him after the fire colony in the Earth Kingdom who I had to personally punish for being so stupid. After that, I knew he was heading towards the Fire Nation, and considering he is probably trying to keep a low profile, three places came to mind, Xu Jing, the Fire Nation Bazaar or the pitiful town Zhang Hui. And two of those options were practically out of the window. The Fire Nation Bazaar had too much security. One mistake, and he would have the entire nation on him, and the disgusting town of Zhang Hui had nothing to offer him, in the military point of view. Which only left Xu Jing from there, his options were nearly limitless. The island was vast, and with little to no security, meaning he would have time to plan his next move, uninterrupted. From Xu Jing it pained me to admit I had no idea where he would go from that point dot, but like everything else I would eventually figure out after all. I have to keep tabs of all my prey, the avatar Zuzu, my uncle and of course, him. The massacre continued with us losing in a humiliating manner, but I was not going to let that trouble me. So turning to my next target, I ran towards my prey with my sword ready. The assassin barely had time to react as my sword hit him in the chest, leaving a nasty cut on it, followed by a horizontal cut cutting his throat, killing him. At the same time, one of the assailants had tried to land a strike on my seemingly wide open back. But thanks to my water sense, I felt the bastard approach and leapt high backward in retreat, dodging the attack in a flowing motion, like a wave on the sea. The assassin who had just tried to attack me was now engaged fighting another bodyguard, ripping him apart. A battle cry echoed in the vicinity as the heavily injured near-death firebender bodyguard tried to burn his attacker off him with a straight punch, followed by a small torrent of fire. As the assassin dodged and the firebender died from his injuries, I dashed forward to intercept him. This was the perfect opening. The guy had ignored me, and this was my chance to kill him for it. Fast like a cat, I sneaked behind, piercing his throat with my blade. Out of the 80 people that the caravan I was guarding had only two remain me and another guard who was bleeding out so technically just me, and only 15 of the Assassin's Creed lookalikes had died and they were easily over a hundred around. It all hinted that I would have to use waterbending soon. Too bad for the people that hired me though. But oh well, it's it worth it to die for this. One of the assassins pointed to the caravan. That is a very, very nice question. I chuckled bitterly as used water bending to lower the temperature around little by little. Tell me is it worth it? You think you will win? One of the assassins chuckled. I am pretty confident in my skill to kill you all. Then again you are welcome to try and prove wrong. I chuckled in amusement as I focused on the water around their feet. Kill them, the leader of the assassins ordered. But none of them moved an inch, though they tried. They found themselves in a sticky situation, for their feet were trapped in ice. Thanks for the conversation it gave me more than enough time to freeze all of you. I winked at them, appreciating their looks of terror and their futile struggles to escape their imminent death as above each and every single one of them, shape and deadly ice spears started to form. It was a very educational way to learn how to use my sword in a real life situation that was good, but I rather stick to bending for the time being. And with the snap of my fingers, the forest was drowned in screams and blood. I wonder was it really worth it to die for a bunch of silk? I wondered out loud. Core. Whoa, yeah, you are right it wasn't, I chuckled. Taking one of the lizard horses the caravan had, I decided to continue with my journey. Not before melting and evaporating all the water I had used to avoid being discovered. Two days later early morning, the sun hung high in the sky, and I felt a little bit guilty. I had allowed once again my empath shit to take control I had effectively enjoyed killing the assassins. But nothing would bring me down not today. Today I was particularly happy, for I was very close to my destination. All it took to know that was a quick glimpse around, trees and other vegetation around, had faces carved into them. It was both beautiful and creepy. Further away, I could see expansive fields of corn in almost all directions, with a few thatched cottages scattered here and there. Every now and then, farmers would cross my path, and walking towards the village I was looking for, the village of Hurrah. 
I would ask every single one of them, they would confirm that. Fuck, yeah. Excuse me sir, I stopped a farmer once again. That was passing by. Is the village of Harar in that direction? I inquired. Yes it is, the farmer smiled. Not many know about us. But we are always happy to have tourists he added. Perfect. I smiled. Um POV Master Jayatso always said a journey is not a journey without its downs. And I never expected that to happen while flying over a swamp. I had been separated from my friends by a wild tornado. I had to find them if it wasn't for me they wouldn't even be here. Katara. I called Appa. Momo. Nothing the only thing I would hear in return were the echoes of my cry. Sokka. I continued to run through the forest calling their names over and over and over. They had to be somewhere around here. And if they were okay, they would probably also be looking for me and the others. So all I could do was keep trying. Next time I would follow my instincts. I was a fool to not do so I felt the swamp was calling me. I told them to land, but their reluctance convinced me otherwise. And now we are here but separated. Ha 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 ha. A girl laughing. I turned around to see a small girl laughing at me. She was wearing a white and green kimono. As for her face the girl turned around before I could see it and ran chasing a flying ball. That had appeared out of nowhere. Wait. I called out, chasing after her. Katara POV I felt strange in this swamp, lost and yet found, alone yet in company. It was a confusing situation for me Katara. That voice mom gran gran used to say grief was like the ocean. It came in waves ebbing and flowing. Sometimes the water was calm, and sometimes it was overwhelming. All we could with it was learn how to swim. I never did every day. The painful memory of the day they took my mother from me drowned in a sea of anger and pain. Katara, mom. I cried out, following her voice. I knew this didn't make any sense. I knew she was dead, but it didn't matter. Just the sound of her voice would be enough for me just to remind me a little bit of her. And you are. I asked with clear skepticism about everything that was transpiring. See after I arrived at the village, a random wolf appeared in the room I rented. Normally this would be no problem for me. But the wolf was not alive. He had no water at all on his body. Even though he drank some of my toilet the point is I knew this wolf was a spirit. Ergo why I was asking said wolf who he was. Studying the creature closely, I noticed that it reminded me of Vardu in a way. The wolf had markings on his body that glowed every now and then, giving the wolf a sense of mysticism that was vexing. I am one of the spirits who resides in this forest, but I'm not important. My master's signature in every plant, animal, and human, from the smallest possible babe to the mightiest of beasts. Many have different names for her, but only one is true, for she's the mother of all faces. I have to be honest as the wolf spoke. I was kinda surprised he did I was speaking a woof or some shit. So your master is the mother of faces right? I inquired, getting a nod for an answer from the spirit wolf, can I meet her? Yes, you are a vexing for her for you are the one creature whose face she didn't mold, the wolf stated. Wait my face wasn't molded by her red flag no crimson flag, cool, 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 unrelated question. Is she mad about that? I'm not entirely sure. But I do not think she is mad mostly interested the wolf answered. And yes, I'm not meeting the almighty face given now who knows what would happen. Alright, an um, quote before I could even manage to finish my sentence the wolf howled. And in the blink of an eye I was standing in front of a late quote TTT fuck. I cursed. I have brought the human. My lady I will kill that wolf if she tries to kill me. I'm not going down alone. Intriguing a soothing yet commanding voice muttered taking a deep breath. I studied the massive big spirit in front of me. Her appearance was not that impressive really, like a big tree with many faces, but her presence was overwhelming. I knew just by looking at her, that she could crush me even with my bending on her instant, a face I did not give a soul I have not touched, nor any other primordial spirit. Life hasn't touched you, death hasn't touched you, it's vexing, and yet so unnatural. I would like to clarify I don't have anything to do with any of this. I mean what you just said, I clarified. I did not want to die because I was an anomaly. I know that much I know, the mother of faces replied. But this is something we have to rectify your mere existence breaks the balance of things. I what? Look, I'm not breaking anything. This bitch is going to kill me while you are going down with me Scooby-Doo. Your fear is unnecessary and misplaced. I won't kill you for it's not your time. Nor is it within my realm to do so. I will merely give you what you never had the chance to get a face. Just for you wait she wants to Michael Jackson my ass. It will in a way give you what you want. For you must also meet the primordial spirits to get the things that were negated to you. By whoever created you. I don't want a new face though I stated I mean. Fuck it. It's not even my original face anyway. But I suppose I don't have much of an option. That is correct I can't allow a face that hasn't been molded by me roam free as an insult to my purpose. The mother of faces nodded. What exactly have I been negated? I asked with curiosity. 
A face to call your own a life to call your own an ending to call your own even your bending, is but a pale imitation of what it could be for the blessing within you is incomplete too, and La tried to fix you dot but they failed, for it's not their realm to do so in short, you are a pale copy, a weak imitation of what a human being should be, a cruel joke of our unknown being. Wait dot I was the great value version of a human in this world, what in the actual fuck? I was stronger than anyone I had met except maybe for Iro. How could I be just but an imitation? You will be complete once you get the gifts every living creature is entitled to, starting with a face, very well. As long as I keep my memories, and I keep being handsome, God knows I will cry if my face ends up being something ugly. You will, un POV it took me a while, but I found my friends. But even then the illusion of that girl laughing still haunted me who was she, and why was she so important? I felt like I had to know, like she was the key to something an important part of my mission. I was so lost and I was supposed to be the avatar I was supposed to know these things. Maybe I would know later maybe I wasn't supposed to know until the time came I really hate my job is so confusing at times anyone else would have been better for it. Appa is near my boomerang can feel him. Sokka stated with a wide grin. For the last time. That's not how boomerangs work. Katara growled in annoyance. Let me have a dream. Sokka cried out, pouting. We will find Appa and Momo no matter what. I added breaking their sibling bickering. We will, Katara nodded. Of course we will. We are unstoppable. Sokka smiled. Arise, Akira I felt a tingling sensation on my face. My new face. It felt like on the lake my reflection was clear. I looked like Simbad from Margi, but with blue hair instead of purple. Weird, but at least I was still handsome. So this is my face. I asked touching my face, marveling at the little details. Like how my skin was a tone lighter than before, or how my hair was longer to the point of almost touching the floor, which would need to be fixed soon it was shocking, and while my face did remind me of Simbad, I could actually see aspects of my original face on my new one, my nose my ears, and even my lips were almost identical to the ones I had before coming to this world, giving me a sense of familiarity I didn't have with the face I had been originally given when I got here. Yes, a face has been given, and now a name must be retrieved, the mother of faces replied. I took a moment to absorb that information, a name must be retrieved. Did that mean I had to get a new name I? Do I have to get a new name? How you call yourself is irrelevant. But every soul has a name unique you must meet he who has named everything and everyone. The mother of faces said as the lake shone bright, a nameless soul is a broken soul. A name gives the soul power, purpose for a soul without a name, is nothing but a battery that keeps your body running, a insult to the principles of life and death. I had a nameless soul just who the fuck sent me here, and why did they do such a sloppy work, for the love of very well. Lead the way, I sighed. I'm afraid I will not guide you for this journey is your alone the mother of faces said, as she snapped her fingers creating a portal in her lake. I will however give you a piece of advice. Not all the primordials will help you so willingly. Some will take offense of your existence especially kindred they won't like this situation at all, she added in a low tone as she pointed to the portal. Now go and claim what is rightfully yours, kindred who the fudge is kindred. Okay, I'll have that in mind. I nodded as I walked towards the portal, wondering deep down what terrors and wonders awaited for me in the spirit world. I wish you the best anomaly, and that was the last thing I heard before the portal swallowed me whole. Anomaly well. That's not the worst title possible I think. Spirit Realm the next thing I knew. I was standing in the spirit realm. The trees and animals were both similar and vastly different to the ones in the physical world. It felt different being here in body and spirit, than just being in spirit. So you found a way to come perfect. That voice Cheshire Cat. Is this your forest? I asked as I studied the area. It seemed different. No I felt you come here and well, came to welcome you. The cat purred a laugh out. That seems like something you would do I chuckled. By the way digging the new face the cat smiled, exploding in a mix of smoke and confetti, reforming on my shoulders. She never gives second faces, unless she feels bad for the person. So you either have a terrible past, or she never gave you a face intriguing, he purred the last word out. Something like that, I chuckled. Iro POV Zuko was near to the point of leaving me behind. I knew that I knew that at one point he would embark on his own journey of self-discovery, and the truth was. That unless he let go of his pain, unless he forgave himself, unless he forgave the situation he was in, unless he realized that the situation was over and out of his control, he would not move forward. I had to let Zuko go if I wanted him to grow, no matter how much it pained me to do so. I had to let my dear nephew, my dear soldier boy, depart on his journey alone. For only then he would see a facet of himself he had yet to discover. I don't know when it would happen, but I knew it would happen soon. Tough POV another day, another victory for the blind bandit I am undoubtedly awesome.
There isn't a gladiator alive capable of matching my muscles. It was truly shocking the contrast of how things went for me on the arena and on my house. My lady dinner is served. One of the servants in the house said, allow me to escort you to the table. I know my way there. I hated how everyone treated me. I was blind, not brainless. I can't let you walk by yourself there my lady, the servant stated. God how I want to smash these idiots to the wall like flies. Very well, you may lead the way. I bit the words out, extending my hand like a oog lady was supposed to do it. As the idiot walked me to the dining table, I felt my mother and father talking about me. I didn't quite get about what, but I felt thanks to the vibrations I had caught with my seismic sense on the earth it was about me. Tough sweetie how was your day? Mother greeted me with a smile, she was happy. Today has been delightful mother god. I hate the role I have to play to keep them happy. Great to hear. Father smiled as he signaled one of the servants to help me sit. For the love of god I'm blind not I'll forget it. Is not like they can hear my inner rambles. After my brief chat with the cat everything went downhill immediately. One second I was chatting with the crazy bastard, and the next I was in a void, seemingly floating aimlessly. I blinked a few times trying to recover from the strange sense of vertigo I had gotten in this foreign realm, but immediately saw Stara as a result, thousands of them. While beautiful it brought one of the most excruciating pain I'd ever experienced. Who the fuck had I offended to get such pain? All I did was get a new fucking face-free plastic surgery. Was that a sin here? A name must be retrieved, a voice spoke in many echoes. For it to happen a soul has to remember how to be escape the depths dot and I will retrieve your name. I what in the actual fuck? Fire tons of it covering what seemed to be a wasteland of destruction and agony. It almost seemed I was inside a volcano, half active, half not. Well, never seen you here before. Who are you? A feminine voice asked with excitement as I only now noticed someone was near me. She was well. She looked human, except for her eyes and legs. Besides that I found interesting her clothing choices. She was wearing a black thong and a bikini which barely covered her nipples. A eh? sorry my name is a eh, just. Call me Jude or something. Great. I can't say my name or the one I had for me. It's like something or someone is muting me every time I try. Okay. The unknown girl shrugged. So why were you sent here? Or are you a local? What? I asked. This is Hell or Tartarus. Where the most evil human spirits are sent the big Olay trash can of the world. Hell. Maybe it was best when I had my fake name and face. I'm starting to think being the great value of myself is best. Who knows I answered realizing if this was hell everyone here was a possible asshole. Mysterious I like it. The unknown girl smiled seductively. I was condemned after I killed my entire family for fun. I swear to god. I will learn spirit bending. Just to kill the bastard that names things well. Not that this hasn't been interesting. But I have to go far away from your crazy ass. But I wanted to have fun the girl smiled trying to catch me off my guard. As she tried to stab me. And thank god even in here I have my bending. For I like a man of honor froze the bitch. Creating the first of its kind of bitchisical. Wait how is water bending working if everything around me is well? Fire and lava the water here should be minimal or non-existent. Deciding to ignore logic for a moment. I looked around, seeing the place seemed to be inside a volcano, with stairs leading to the exit. Taking a deep breath I started to walk towards the top, freezing and maiming every sinner I encountered on my path. And I'll be honest I had no idea what mission or anything I had to do here it was annoying. But easy, so why send me here? To a place I don't even belong to. Ha ha ha. How wrong I was to say it was easy I mean yes it was. But boy things can be hard in more than one way. Hours turned into days and days into months, and I kept on climbing the stairs. That seemed to extend infinitely. The worst part was that I knew I hadn't been here for months. But it felt like it kinda felt Itachi was my personal jailer alright the stairs are not an option, so what else can I do? I hung taking a seat on the ground. Die quote a poor idiot had once again tried to kill me, and like all the others was now frozen. It kinda felt this place was full of Hanks Hans the idiot who was supposed to be engaged with you oh god. This is not any hell this is my personal hell. But in all seriousness I was tired no matter what I tried or how hard I tried the goal seemed to be always at the same distance. I give up. I sighed throwing my hands to the air in defeat. I can't escape this alone. This is a prisoner challenge I can't beat. I chuckled as I closed my eyes, trying to take a moment to think to organize my ideas. After a few minutes of not moving, with my eyes closed, I decided to continue on my impossible journey just to find. I wasn't in the place anymore. What? I muttered. You have passed a voice echoed in my head. Who are you? I asked. I am the truth I am who names every soul and knows their truth their sins, and blessings the voice said as he appeared in front of me, shocking me. The truth as he called himself was nothing but a featureless version of me, like someone had just drawn the edges of my body without coloring or doing anything else. He had no face nothing, 
I don't have a face because I am older than the mother of faces I named her after all. As if reading my mind the spirit answered, I don't have a form right now all you see is a reflection of your broken soul. Why did you send me to hell? I asked trying to avoid sounding angry. My test was the test almost every human fails humility you had to accept you are incapable of doing everything. And that as a human you are mortal. And things will not always go your way the truth stated. Hell was a prison, a test you created for yourself. All I did was push you into it for hell. Doesn't exist here physically. But in your mind, are you saying my own mind fudge me over? I wanted to say fuck me over, oh. I wanted to curse like a sailor. But would have to wait until the almighty spirit was done with me. Humans tend to be their own worst enemy. The mind is not always a friend the truth said. Months trapped in my mind. I almost growled in disbelief. Like a dream that feels like a lifetime you did not spend the time you experienced you were out for maybe an hour or so. The truth added amused with my reaction. Now it's time to fix your soul by giving you your name. I had Tsukuya meet my ass. I hate myself so much right now. Your name is... Sign and dollar exclamation point dollar the truth said and one thought clouded my mind. What the fuck does that mean? I don't understand that. I smiled awkwardly at the mighty spirit. You don't have to understand that a soul's name is sometimes only known to me. The truth stated, now it's time for you to go Gaia the mother of life is growing impatient well. They are growing impatient good luck with their test for life is not always easy. Fuck I muttered as I once again lost consciousness. Go to the other side of the forest if you want to pass that's all it takes as my body slowly woke up. I immediately noticed something wrong very wrong super wrong. Though I still didn't know what exactly was out of place. Taking a deep breath, I rolled around trying to move my arm. Finding what was wrong my arm didn't listen to me it felt weird. Come on, just move I encouraged my arm. It still wouldn't move. I groaned as I opened my eyes to see what was keeping my arm from moving. What I saw surprised me greatly. Taking another deep breath. I whipped my head around left and right trying to find out where I was and what was wrong. It was when my head continued past the point it was supposed for the fourth time that I noticed. Ha! Huh, since when I have owl powers. Deciding to test that again. I carefully turned my head as far as it would go in both directions. And yes, I had an owl neck apparently. Going all the way back to my OMG. Breath Akira. Breath. Let's check the facts one. I have a weird neck, and my back my back was made out of water. Well to be precise feathers made out of water. Great. Ha huh, ha. Uh. What's next? A beak. God please no. Crossing my eyes to check that taunt to the Murphy Law. I had just invoked I discovered I did in fact have a peak. A pitch black hawk beak. On my face. What type of fucking test was this shit? Who the fucks makes someone a bird to learn about life god these spirits make no sense. My water wings ruffled in annoyance. As I skipped through the forest, maybe this was a quest to appreciate my human body as I walked. I felt something spying me through the bushes I narrowed my eyes at the spot. Suddenly two dots appeared in front of me, just floating there menacingly. A the fuck is that is a predator isn't it as if answering my question teeth filled my vision as the creature leapt from the bushes. Shit I shouted in surprise avoiding the attack with ease. In front of me stood what could only be described as a shadow wolf wearing a mask, literally that a fucking wolf made out of shadows. I kinda feel like a Pokemon now. The wolf lunged once more and I dodged once again. The wolf seemed to take pleasure in the fact I was fighting back. Trying to end this charade I tried to attack him with water bending and surprise. I had no water bending, no bending no human body to fight and a massive size difference awesome. Gotta love Gaia. Well if I can't fight it I can certainly avoid death perhaps. Now that I knew I was vulnerable, all I could focus was on the needle sharp, saliva dripping more that wanted to consume to consume me. I continued to avoid the big shadow wolf for a while. But in the end, the shadow wolf proved to be the superior predator, and sank his sharp teeth into my body. Killing me it's weird to feel how life fades away it's impossible to describe the pain and relief that one feels during this. But instead of actually dying, I woke up once again where I had woken up as a big water hawk. E, didn't I just die yes yes I did how can I be focus? This is another mind trick there has to be a way out. With that in mind, I decided to try another approach maybe flying would do the trick I was a bird now. And for the duration of this test. I had to think like one. Birds don't walk through infested predator forests, no, they fly. Easier said than done while getting off the ground was easy controlling my wings was harder. Two hours later and 100 cranial contusions, I was ready to fly, and I couldn't help but smirk when I passed the spot the wolf was supposed to be, inwardly praising myself for the genius idea. I am a pain struck me like a lightning, and all of a sudden, I was falling down like a dead goose, a glowing arrow protruding from my watery chest, someone had shot me fuck me sideways once again. 
I woke up in the same fucking spot. So flying and walking doesn't work maybe swimming. If I recall correctly there isn't anything big enough in a forest river to eat a hawk. And just my luck as I was flying before the arrow struck me down. I had noticed a river nearby walking to the river was easy. And swimming was also easy perks of having my wings and body being out of water. Now all I have to do is get to the other side and end this love crashing nightmare. Run and die. A deep voice accompanied by a growl shouted. The wolf. Fuck. The endless cycle of me trying to avoid the mysterious marksman and the wolf repeated itself hundreds of times. Everything I tried would be countered by those two one way or another in the end, the result was the same me dying over and over again. I am done I chuckled bitterly, fuck the test. I don't want the gift. Is like trying to eat healthy in McDonald's impossible? Do you choose the teeth? A soothing voice asked, stalking me like a prey from behind a tree. I didn't even notice the weird entity getting there or the arrow. A voice deep and hungry whispered in my ear. It was the wolf standing behind me. Does that even matter? I laughed, isn't the result going to be the same? Me dying. You are right, in the end it doesn't matter, the end result is the same. For death is unavoidable, the calm and soothing voice said from behind the tree. You have learned the truth of death, you have passed the wolf growled, annoyed. Fret not dear wolf, we will hunt him when his time comes, the other entity stated. A wolf arrows death. You are kindred, I stated. Yes, we are the wolf growled his answer, never one. Without the other, the still physically unknown entity completed the sentence. That's right dear lamb, that's right. The wolf laughed. So can I go now? I asked them. You passed the test of life, and Death Gaia decided to leave us to test you. For we are two sides of the same coin, now you must meet he who created the spiritual power. And your body will be complete, both wolf and lamb said at the same time. As I nodded, just wanting to escape the hell I had been forced to live to learn a lesson I didn't even need okay maybe I did. But not like this. Not like this. We give you the blessings of life and death until next time at sign and dollar exclamation point dollar after my test with the spirit of death, kindred. I was once again kicked out whatever realm they had. Slowly opening my eyes, the first thing I noticed was that I was in a house of sorts. Then the hard and slightly cold floor underneath me. Then the smell of tea. It took me a few seconds to realize I was lying on the floor in a stereotypical Japanese household. Odd. But not the oddest, thought it was something I had not been expecting at all. Realizing this was probably my last test, I bolted up in surprise. After the painfully terrifying test of the spirit of death, I well wasn't exactly thrilled to be here. Slowly walking out of the house, I was immediately greeted by the sound of birds happily tweeting in the air, animals of all kinds played and jumped in the green fields around me. And I could not help but stare in delight at how lovely it all looked, and thought I could spend hours just marveling at these seemingly stupid things. If the test was to admire how lovely things were, well, the last spirit was lucky. After the last two truth and kindred, well anything looks like a day in the beach, and this looks like fucking heaven. Mentally dot it had been so long, since I had actually relaxed, that I had forgotten how it felt. Beautiful isn't it? A bunny asked as he hopped towards me. I thought you deserved this after kindred and truth Gaia knows I have no idea how you keep yourself together. I eyed the bunny the small and cute bunny and asked, you are a bunny. Oh no ha ha ha. The bunny laughed, this is just a glamour. An illusion of sorts, so that I can talk with you see, I am the biggest spirit in the world. The lion turtles were my pets at one point so yeah, wait those massive things were his pets. Shit, holy crap. I chuckled, well thanks for the break I have been tortured mentally and physically, to get something that was supposed to be mine without any of this, what was the fucking point? Yes, there can be a pain sometimes. I apologize for their behavior. The bunny sighed sadly. Well, you are free to go. What about my gift? I asked the bunny. I gave it to you before you even came here right before kindred kick you out of their realm. The bunny shrugged. I eyed the bugs bunny lookalike. No test. Nope, I'm free to go. I asked. Yet no hidden tests I asked once again. Nope, you have officially become my favorite spirit I laughed. Ha 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 thanks, now go the bunny pushed me. With ease, might I add to a portal that opened in the middle of the field. You have a very worried cat out there, trying to enter the primordial spirit realm all Cheshire cares thanks. No problem pal. The bunny smiled, kicking out of his realm. Through the portal I landed on Cheshire, in Cartony Way, Oak finally. The cat turned to smoke materializing in front of me. With a worried look, for a moment there thought they wanted to kill you. I tried to get in and save you, but I couldn't enter the realms, yeah? I was told I chuckled. Did something bad happen in there? The cat asked with low hiss, not exactly directed at me. Well, I was mentally tortured into a prison with no escape after that I was teleported to a forest, where for some reason I was a fucking bird. I paused seeing my crazy cat friend confused and ready to ask a question. A bird? The cat asked after a second. Yes, a water hawk. I nodded. Why? The cat asked after another second. I have no freaking clue I sighed. In the forest, 
I then proceeded to die in every imaginable way to a pair of assholes over and over again, just to show me death is unavoidable, would have loved to get that explanation on a PowerPoint presentation, or a pamphlet. Heck even a infomercial would have been nice, though the last one was very chill. He let me pass without a test, but thanks to the clear PTSD I have now, thanks to the beautiful tests I feel this is a test or a dream, for I no longer can discern between reality, and the shit they put me through while the cat said in a deflated tone, and most powerful spirits are assholes. Yes, I nodded. If you want I can send you back to the human realm the cat offered. No I shook my head, I wanted to go somewhere else. If you can take me to Vatu, are you crazy Vatu is? Meh, after all that you can probably deal with Vatu, the Cheshire cat said as he opened a portal. If you need me just shout this call I am mad as a hatter, and I'll be there. Got it. I said stepping through the portal. Vata POV a few months ago or years time in the spirit would be confusing. The point is a few months ago, I had the chance to escape the perfect minion, to help me out of this tormenting prison. But just when I was about to offer him, my power someone woke him up, and once again I was alone. The only thing that kept me sane was the thought of destroying rather maybe that human would be back soon yo. That voice the human how naive he was different his body was different what in the actual you have changed. I stated. Oh you chaotic bastard you have no idea. The human laughed, though I could feel his laugh was hiding pain, anger and other emotions. Hate so powerful, that it could be mistaken as my own. What changed? I inquired, as it's not every day that I find something I can't truly understand. Well allow me to tell you a tale, and the human started little by little his intense hatred made absolute sense, being tortured to such a degree, and still have a sane mind, maybe I had underestimated the human. Dying at the hands and paws of kindred, hundreds of times just to teach him a menial lesson, spending what can only be described as decades of torture, to get something that was supposed to be free for every mortal. A truly mesmerizing way to try and break someone. I would personally go for physical pain and outright annihilation, but I suppose they prefer breaking their preys apart, mentally first. So that's about it. The human chuckled, once again radiating with such delightful hate that made me shiver. Truly a terrible journey. I nodded with a hidden smile. Perhaps now you would want to hear my offer. I think I have an idea of what you want. The human smiled. It seems I have found a partner of my own one with the potential to be as chaotic me. Oh dear rather soon. I will crush you. After talking a bit with Vata he offered a deal. His freedom in exchange for power, isn't he adorable? Thinking I wasn't going to see behind his scheme to control my now pseudo vulnerable mind. But I could always manipulate him. Aren't you a cutie patity? I chuckled trying to get a fit out of him. Cutie pa. What do you mean? Vata growled in annoyance. You think that after all the shit I went through I will let a spirit lease my body? Just because. I chuckled and the personification of chaos at that. I can offer you power beyond your wildest dreams. Vata growled once again annoyed. No doubt as long as I kill Rava and turn the world into a mess I laughed. Rava has to die Vata spat in a somewhat angry and deflated tone. Look, let's make a deal. I sighed, making Vata perk up. I will consider the deal if if. Vata inquired. If we make this avatar merging thingy my way. I added with a wink. I don't trust your chaotic ass. And for a good reason, I'm pretty sure you want to manipulate me, and frankly that won't happen. But if we do this my way, I will consider it what exactly entitles. Your way? Vatu asked me after a long moment of silence. Well for starters, let's have one of those massive lion turtles merge us. Or at the very least, let me consult with one of them. I answered only the turtle would know for sure how bad of an idea this was, and if things went wrong would be able to separate us. The Ancient Ones. I see Vatu, started to move around his prison thinking about my offer. Will I we still kill Rava? I will kick the Avidas as that was already on my plans. But I am not sure about killing him. I hummed in deep thought. But we could humiliate her and her host, if that tickles your spiritual pickle. I chuckled. Tickle my wh never mind, that seems acceptable, showing Rava we are superior in every way, in every life, Vatu laughed like the typical evil overload, and while compliant, I knew he wasn't going to let this down. He was going to try to manipulate me into killing Rava, if we merged. Alright then, any ideas how to find one of those giant lion turtles? I asked. I haven't been out in almost 10,000 years. I have no idea. Vata stated. Well I'll find out, in the meantime well. I was going to say stay here. But, it's not like you have much of an option. I chuckled, getting a feral growl for response. Very well. I expect you to come back, Vata growled, annoyed at my joke. Don't get your spiritual panties on twist, I'll be back. I winked as I called for my ride, Cheshire, to open a portal. See you later. I waved at Vatu as I stepped through the portal. As soon as I walked out the portal, Cheshire eyed me and asked. And here I thought I was mad, going over to Vatu. 
He isn't that bad I chuckled. He is the spirit of chaos, he is literally the incarnation of bad, Cheshire pointed out. Chaos and evil are two different things, chaos is not necessarily evil, but it can be, I pointed out, chaos was in essence neutral, though of course Vatu was more evilly inclined in the chaotic scale, but I didn't think he was pure evil after Kindred and the others, well, he wasn't that threatening anymore. Well, if you say so, the cat shrugged. Anyway, any idea where I can find a lion turtle around here? I asked, looking around the spirit forest. An ancient one, Cheshire purred, and I nodded an answer. Well, there is one in the Fire Peninsula. Can you open a portal there? I inquired. No, that's too far away from here. The cat laughed, exploding in a mix of fire and confetti, immediately reforming on my shoulder with a low purr. Vatu I could because he was close so, we'll have to walk, or in my case float. We, I chuckled. You got that right. I will not let you go alone Gaia knows you are a magnet for trouble here. The cat purred teasingly. Now follow me. All right? I nodded, it would do be good to have a guide. The spirit world was truly unique and beautiful, fueled with unique wildlife and experiences that almost make up for the assholes that rule it. Trees would change colors and shapes without any reason, besides just because, and animals coexisting. It was truly mesmerizing. I couldn't blame Iroh for wanting to stay here. So what did you talk about with Vatu anyway? My guide purred in wonder. He wants to escape his prison, and use my body to kill Rava, bringing an era of chaos to the world. I answered without skipping a beat. Cheshire stopped cold on his tracks. And you said no right? I said maybe. I chuckled. Are you cry forget that stupid question? The cat sighed in frustration. Look, I'm all about being crazy I'm mad as a hatter. But this is crossing a line Vatu will manipulate you. I know. I nodded, knowing that while Vatu had technically accepted, he would still try to manipulate me from within. To drown the world in chaos? But just perhaps I would be able to outpower his resolve, which was one of the reasons I wanted to talk with the Lion Turtles. But I have a feeling things will turn out just fine, very well. Cheshire sighed in defeat, just be careful. I will, I will, I nodded. Vada POV the human had changed a lot, though I can hardly be surprised by this development. Dealing with Kindred alone is a pain I still remembered. When they showed me death was unavoidable. Like the human I too had to die countless times for nothing. Why teach an immortal being what death truly means, if he can't never truly die? Even if I get destroyed, I will eventually reform inside rather, meaning I can't die, not for good at least. This change on him was to be expected, but it affected my plans a bit, though it was barely an inconvenience, for if he had chaos in his heart, I would win whispering his soul to do my bidding. I will see you soon rather. I laughed for the first time in 950 years. I had a real chance to escape this rotten prison. It took Cheshire two weeks to take me to the borders of the Fire Peninsula of the Spirit Realm, before he abruptly disappeared without saying anything leaving me in an unfamiliar place with a lot of questions. As far as the eye could see, an endless plain of red fire-colored cracked earth covered the area, interspersed with black vegetation and fire-like roses. The sky in this part of the Spirit Realm looked like I would expect in Hell, vivid red almost magma-colored, with the occasional black or red lightning flashing across the hellish sky. Well, I guess I have to finish this journey on my own. I muttered, RC noticed that in the far, far distance comma there was a moving mountain. Wait moving, the turtle. Seeing this was my only clue as to where I had to go, I started making my way for the moving mountain. Measuring the distance by the eye, I knew it would take me several hours to reach the foothills of the lion turtle, maybe even a day. Hopefully, I will be able to find some place to make a shelter as I make my way there. As I walk, I started to contemplate my situation. Did I really want to merge with Vatu? It had its cons and pros, for one I would become the avatar with some extra perks, but was it really worth it? For one, I would be forever one with him, meaning I would have to deal with his whispers of chaos for however long I will live. Well, I suppose I will get my answer about it when I get a hang of the turtle. Perhaps things will go smoothly with me and Crazy Vatu. Right now, I'm honestly more concerned about Cheshire he just disappeared as he was guiding. Maybe I got him into trouble or something. I could hope he was okay. Maybe he had other things to do. I hummed as a deafening crash behind me shattered my train of thought. Twirling around to find a big crater behind me, taking my distance, I looked at the crater in anticipation water ready to strike if needed. Moments after the crash, the very earth started to shake violently, fire spreading through the area as a roar erupted from the crater. The ground shuddered and collapsed in on itself as a huge fire bear jumped out of the crater. Found you. Ha! Exclamation point ha! The bear shouted triumphantly, with the fire around him growing in volume. Okay. I didn't know how to answer such a display of well I didn't know. Should I attack him? Should I be friendly? I didn't know dot but thanks the heavens the bear made my decision easier by trying to attack me. Which resulted in him being immediately frozen. Well that was something, finally a worthy opponent. 
The bear shouted with glee as he melted my ice in the blink of an eye, our battle will be legendary. And I died laughing. The universe played me a dirty one with that one. Oh god, do you need a few seconds before we embark in the battle of the century? The bear shouted with a somewhat worried look, and then it hit me, why I wasn't feeling any real hostility from the bear. He wasn't a bad guy, he was just a battle junkie. That thought I was a good choice for a dance partner. Not that I don't like the idea of a good battle, but I have a mission to complete first. I told the bear, after calming down from my fit of laughter. Then I shall help you in this mission, so that we can battle. The bear offered no, more like included himself in my journey. And by this tone, I knew I had no way out besides fighting him and seeing how easy he melted my ice. That battle would take a few. Very well. I sighed, digging the enthusiasm. I do everything with a 200% of myself. Or I don't do IT. The bear smiled. So, what exactly did you mean earlier by I found you? Were you looking for me? I was actually quite curious. I mean how did he hear about me to decide looking for me? I did not know you. I just greet everyone the same way. But none has ever managed to last more than a sec against the wildfire of my soul. The bear answered. Yeah, a battle junkie alright, very well. My mission is simple. I need to talk with the lion turtle of this peninsula. Help me out, and I'll fight with you. Deal. Deal. And, he was gone. The moment he said deal he just ran. Full speed towards the mountain. I wonder when will he notice I am not behind him. I give him two hours before he does three if he's a total idiot. Five hours later it took my newly forcibly acquired companion five hours to notice I wasn't with him yeah. Sad in many levels. But hey, besides his constant shouting and obvious lack of normal cognitive abilities, he was a pretty chill bear. Guiding me through the fire peninsula like a professional guide. I guess thanks to the fact he was a local, if his fiery body was anything to go by that is. I think we should set a camp. I yawned, starting to feel the weight of the day slowing me down. Very well. The bear laughed, let US compete in a camp setting fight. Is everything with you a challenge? I asked the bear, taking a deep breath. Very well, we will save this competition for another day. The bear chuckled awkwardly, noticing my shining annoyance at his guy-like attitude. For now, let us get to the lion turtle. I yawned as I stretched my arms, focusing on creating a dome of ice to sleep in. I will sleep inside the dome. I pointed to my newly created dome. You four. Well, obvious reasons need to find another place to sleep very well. The bear nodded as he literally burned the ground a few yards away to a black crisp and like a dog, circled the burned ground three times before falling asleep immediately. God is like someone mixed guy, a dog and Tai Lung and this bear came out. I chuckled before going to sleep. The very next morning, we embarked back to the mission at hand and rushed to the turtle lion with the most youthful bear as a guide. We arrived there before the night started to set. The fire bear, with consideration to my mission of talking alone with the lion turtle, left me to go and talk alone with it as to not disturb our conversation in any way. I'll wait for you. The bear shouted happily. Taking a deep breath I approached the ancient spirit halfway through. The spirit turns at me, fixing a sharp pair of eyes at me giving me a scrutinizing look as if sizing me down. The ancient spirit blinked slowly as he hummed thoughtfully at my presence, puffing a big cloud of smoke out of his mouth. So you're the one the primordials have been talking about? The ancient spirit rasped curtly. Not exactly what I expected. Trying not tell him, fuck you. I politely asked what he meant. Not sure what the assholes above him had told him about me. Maybe good things, maybe bad ones, either way fuck them. They said you are unique and anomaly. But all I see is another human, the spirit added with disdain. Race as much. I came here to ask you something. If that's okay, very well. Ask away, child, the spirit said in a tired tone. What would happen if I merged with Vatu? Would he control me? Or would I be in control? Would we fight for control? I asked, deciding it was best to go straight to the point. Apparently the turtle didn't like me. So I wanted to get things over with. Vatu the spirit of chaos. That's an intriguing question. The turtle chuckled. Though there was no emotion behind it, the answer would be you. You would be in control, Vatu would be merging with you not the other way around. But if your spirit is weak, he could corrupt you, and eventually take control of your actions. I suppose you want to merge with that child. I was thinking about it. I nodded. Then come closer, the turtle said with a annoyed sigh. I will give you a piece of knowledge that will help you with this plan you have. I eyed the spirit in shock. I was sure he didn't like me, and yet he was offering to help me. It was weird, but I won't say to no to free help. I thought you didn't like me. I don't like you. And I never will. Humans destroyed and killed my brothers and sisters for sport, and only a few of us remain. But I don't hate you enough to let Vata control you. The ancient spirit replied, I will give you the tools to even the playing field that way. It will be your absolute fault, if you lose control well. I suppose that's a very valid reason to hate humans. 
I know would too, with nothing more to do. I did as I was told and approached the spirit, who slowly moved one of his paws to touch me with one claw on my head and one on my chest. Immediately after knowledge poured in like breaking a dam, it was overwhelming, the principles of energy bending. In the era before the Avatar, we bent not the elements, but the energy within ourselves. To bend another's energy, your own spirit must be unbendable, or you will be corrupted and destroyed. Remember this for if your spirit fails or you have doubts, Vatu will reign supreme over you. Holy I gasped as the turtle went back to its original position. Now Began, I want to sleep and your presence here is no longer welcomed. The ancient spirit roared with enough strength to send me flying a few hundreds miles away from him creating a portal just where I was going to land, avoiding a violent crash with the ground. Landing like a sack of potatoes, I groaned as I slowly stood up, finding myself back to where I had started my journey, Advatus. I take it it didn't end well, Vata commented with something reminiscent of a smirk on his expressionless face. It went well. I actually don't know how it went. I chuckled. I mean I got what I wanted, but I think I have been banned from the Fire Peninsula. Not sure though, I shrugged. Have you come to a decision then? Vatu asked, ever so impatient. Yes, let's do this. I nodded as I remembered what the spirit had told me. That to bend another's energy. My own spirit had to be unbendable, or I would be corrupted and destroyed very well. Vatu said, trying to hide his excitement, and failing miserably, enter my prison so we can become one. All right. I nodded as I slowly walked towards the tree keeping Vato in place. Wondering with each step if this was a good choice, was I perhaps being an idiot? Or was this actually a wise decision? Our merge will be unlike any other I will do what the coward of Rava didn't do I will show her once again who is the best. God the inferiority complex on this guy is massive. But it will do me well, if that means more power for me. We will definitely kick the merged ass, I chuckled. Hey, that's a way to put it, Vata growled in agreement, before he continued on his speech about how powerful we would be. I was in the meantime walking, with each step weighing me down like a rock in a river. I wasn't scared. But even then, this decision felt like a big step in my life that would change everything. All right, Vatu, I said as I stepped through the barrier keeping him in place, without doing anything to the barrier in question the barrier didn't even flinch. It just let me walk right through it well. Not that I cared why it doesn't work keeping people out. Let's become the edgy version of the Avatar. Yes, we will. The what? Vatu asked, shaking his head immediately after. I don't care. Let's do it. The incarnation of chaos glowed and rushed at me without hesitation, disappearing out of sight as his body went inside of me. Seconds later, I felt pain and then memories, or rather flashes of things that didn't make sense as my body glowed in a dark colored energy. Feeling by the second how Vatu became one with me as he fought for control of my body but his torture was a breeze compared to what I had previously experienced. It almost made me want to thank the primordials, but no. After the tug of war for control that I had for now one came a wave of power. Lots of it I felt nearly unstoppable. So we are one now. I asked myself, hearing a voice inside my head whisper, yes, perfect. I chuckled as I slowly opened my eyes, that now sported a glowing red color as raw power coursed through me. I felt different beyond the power I had obviously gained. I felt like a totally different person. Being one with Vatu certainly was a unique experience. I could feel his emotions inside me, his unyielding hate for Rava, his undeniable desire for chaos, and more. Well, I think I can get used to this. I muttered to myself as I stretched my arms. I, you know so much of this world of the future. How is this even possible Vatu inquired from deep within. Oh yeah, I had forgotten all about my meta-knowledge, which now seems to be at the hands of Vatu. I wasn't always a Kira, not that it matters anymore, so I lost. Again well, it seems that the human I chose to merge with on the lag was weak, Vatu commented with a sour tone, probably angry at what he saw in my memories. I inwardly chuckled at that. Well, this time things will be different. Yes, they will most definitely will Vatu laughed in agreement. I did something Rava was too afraid to do I have made you technically ageless. That way we will walk the earth for almost all eternity, showing each reincarnation of Rava, who is the superior being. Technically ageless? Isn't that a scary and enticing concept, so I'll be 18 forever? No, I'm not an idiot your body will fully mature, and only then you will stop the pitiful cycle of human nature. I think this was experimental, so who knows. And by the way human from when do you get you are 18 this body is 16 years old. Now wait a freaking damn minute. I am most definitely sure I looked older than that before the new face, body, soul and shit. Are you sure? I inquired. Now that we are one I know everything about your body and spirit your age seemed higher before, probably because the imperfect vessel you had was aging at a rapid rate. If I had to take an educated guess. I would said you would have died around your human 40s with that defective body you had. Wow, I really had the great value version of a human body. 
Well, it's not like I was sure of my age anyways. I sighed with a quick shrug as I stepped out of the tree where Vatu had been sealed all this time. As soon as I stepped out of the now broken seal, I immediately noticed things were changing around me. The former wasteland was slowly transforming into a booming forest, with the dead tree where Vatu had lived for thousands of years, coming back to life. It seemed without Vatu, this part of the spirit world was coming back to life, showing his mere presence was life-consuming. Any idea how to get out of here? I inwardly asked, wondering if Vatu knew a way back to the human world. Find a spirit and order the weakling to obey us by opening a portal. Vatu growled his answer. Calm down Nelly. I rolled my eyes at his attitude, taking a deep breath I called out. I am mad as a hatter. Seconds later, a portal appeared in front of me, with Cheshire coming out of it. Finally, I am so so quote the cat stopped cold on his tracks, you merged with Vatu Force. That pitiful excuse for a cat to open a portal. Vatu inwardly growled. I sighed ignoring Vatu. I did. Well, this is a new level of crazy. The cat sighed, before looking back at me with curiosity. Are you still you? I chuckled. I mean, I don't have any urges to kill, or put in the world in a everlasting chaos. So, yeah. I'm still me. Good, I don't like my chaotic form, the cat laughed. Now, not that this conversation isn't riveting conversation, but I need a favor. I are the cat. I need you to send me back to the human world. Sure, the cat purred, teleporting behind my back in a puff of smoke. Oh, and what happened before you left me stranded? I asked, just now remembering he had mysteriously disappeared midway to the lion turtle. Oh, that's something or someone pulled me out of the fire peninsula. And then I just couldn't find you. The cat said with an abnormally serious tone for him. Well, what is done is done. I sighed, while silently wondering just who had done that well. The cat sighed, opening a portal. The portal should drop you back to where you entered the spirit realm. Thanks. I smiled, waving my goodbyes at the cat as I slowly walked towards the portal. When all of the sudden, I felt something someone was approaching. And I knew who the bear. All right, bye. I speed up my walk entering through the portal. I did not walk to fight him, right now. In the blink of an eye, I was back at where everything started, Forgetful Valley. But this time the Mother of Faces was nowhere to be seen. Which in all honesty was good. Here we are Vatu. I muttered to myself, getting no answer. I had to change my plans a bit well a lot. I was the Avatar, well the Dark One, meaning I had three elements to master. And I meant master like I wanted with water, with all the subclasses on bending. Though this made me wonder, what element would prove to be my opposite? Every avatar has an element they struggle to learn. Well, I suppose if I take an educated guess, I would immediately answer, eh, but who knows? Well, at least one thing was sure fire bending was the first thing I would learn. It was both the one that attracted me the most, and considering I was in the Fire Nation, it was quite convenient. Well, let's start a journey Vatu. I chuckled. Don't forget Odile Rava has to taste defeat oh, so he can't still speak. Interesting. Don't worry that will happen soon. After I master the elements of course. I inwardly chuckled. Things were sure getting interesting. Two days later after my merge with the chaotic spirit of darkness Vatu, I found myself walking towards the Fire Nation barracks accompanied by a guy that had recruited me to be part of Fire Nation Army. After a quick demonstration of my poor fire bending, which was sorely lacking a lot of form I mean, my fire was pitiful right now, but they needed soldiers. Reason why the guy had decided to recruit me in the first place, and I had accepted with the clear intention of learning fire bending from their teachers, with my new face, things were bound to be easier. I would learn what they had to offer, and then I would leave, and if things went downhill, I was prepared for it. The walk to the barracks was long and silent, with the recruiter of the nation not daring to speak a word for some reason. Though I suppose there is nothing left to say. I walked up to him, he recruited me, and here I am. It takes us a while to get to the barracks, where I am immediately searched by the soldiers for any contraband or illegal items. Once cleared out at the door, the man led me to one of the buildings where the training soon-to-be soldiers lived and grunted. That will be your home until you learn proper bending. The man pointed to an empty campsite to his right, I will be back with your armor. Wait in there, taking a look at my room. I notice it is fairly dull, with only a tent and a bedroll and a small fire pit. But I suppose for now it shall do. It's not like I have the intention of living here. One hour later after one hour of waiting without hearing from the guy that had recruited me, I tentatively stepped away from my room, scanning the area with curiosity. Taking a deep breath I decided to explore the barracks to see what was around. Nothing too impressive. At much, they were a bit more advanced than the Water Nation with their training equipment. But nothing more striking. Didn't they tell you to wait? A man growled a question in anger behind me. A quick look at his uniform, posture and tone of voice told me everything I needed to know about the man. He was the captain of this underwhelming place. I apologize. I was curious to see this place. I replied without skipping a beat, getting a slap across the face as soon as I spoke, which immediately in turn made Vadi scream inside of me. 
to kill them all, and boy was I with him on that one no, control yourself Akira, you need to learn firebending, you will speak only when I tell you to, the captain hissed grabbing me by the neck, I understand, once again I was slapped, and boy was I close to strangling the man, you will learn respect, you will learn to obey the man said, with each word slapping me with the back of his metal glove, over and over and over again, and you know what, fuck this camp, fuck this nation, and most of all, fuck this guy I am tired of this shit, I will learn fire bending alone, before the next slap managed to connect with my face, I grabbed the captain by the wrist and pulled him towards me, delivering a knee to his stomach they doubled him over with enough strength to break a few bones. Immediately after attacking the captain, the soldier around circled me, pointing their weapons and fists at me. At that I smiled, remembering what little knowledge I had for fire bending, about the art being fueled by emotions I inhaled, and let all the anger, hate and despair, both Vatu and I had sink in on my very core, gathering the emotions in my fist fuel my fire. Before taking a step forward and in a quick straight punch, letting all of those emotions free, creating a large, no abnormally massive torrent of fire, that radiated so much heat that melted the wall and path it way, showing how powerful emotion in this world could really be, from rock to molten lava, killing a few soldiers stupid enough to try and redirect the attack. The result was so astoundingly powerful and scary that the soldiers that managed to survive and see everything that had go down, glanced at each other, silently agreeing to let me go for it was clear death awaited them, if so they chose to try and capture me. I knew I had no skill, nor technique with my fire bending. But apparently what I had was quite useful, raw power with Vatu inside me. My fire was fueled by thousands of years of hatred and agony meaning. Right now there weren't many firebenders in the world able to redirect my flames. Iro, Ozai and probably Azala. Oh yeah, I forgot I sighed, going back to the unconscious captain. I can let you live nobody bitch slaps me. So many times and lives to tell the tale. I smiled at the man, before breaking his neck, greeting an inward cheer of approval from Vatu. Was I being manipulated by Vatu right now? It suffered kingly, but I had to be honest. I had killed for way less, and this guy was just poking a monster he got what he was looking for. Fuck you all. I shouted as I ran out of the barracks with a new quest at hand, finding a master that is not associated with the Fire Nation right now. Perhaps the Fire Hippie that trained Zhao. He seemed to be a very capable man with the ability to fire bend with his mind. I could also go to the dragon city in the Anime, Arnon Zuko, learned how to bend after seeing the dragons move, or I could go to Iro. After all, a new face brought countless benefits, meaning Iro would probably not recognize me, and if I am correct he is alone right now, at least I thought so. After all, this was around the time Zuko went all hobo on his uncle. The point was, I didn't need the Fire Nation to learn. I had many viable options with some of the best masters in the world. After my little display on the barracks, I took my time to decide where to go next. While I let things cool down a notch, I had to be certain who I wanted to teach me the bases of fire bending. Those bases would cement my style, marking me forever. Jiong Jiong, Iro or the Dragons. Jiong Jiong, also known as the Deserter, is a very strong, enlightened, and somewhat embittered fire bending master who had the ability to bend fire with his mind. On the other hand, Iro, also known as the Dragon of the West, was also a very strong, enlightened individual. But unlike Jiong Jiong, Iro knew how to create and redirect lighting, and many other things. Both had a lot to offer, and both had a lot of reasons to deny me any training, at least from their parts. Jiong Jiang, thanks to his bitterness against his element and nation, and Iro, thanks to his full-time job as his nephew's spiritual guide. Now as for the dragons, well they taught Iro and Zuko in the future, they were known as original firebenders, but they also had only taught people who already had trained beforehand to begin with. In short, my best shot was Jiang Jiang to get the base style. He, unlike Iro, would be a bit easier to manipulate out of his shell. Iro, on the other hand, didn't have any doubts of his mission. And, after getting my fire base, I could learn from the dragons. With that task at hand, I had but one thing to do, go back to the Earth Kingdom and find my master. We have other options, Varda growled. I stopped cold on my tracks as I focused on Vatu. Like what? You learned and made your own style by observing Tui and La. Do the same again. With me your talent is unmeasurable. You will master the elements faster that the pipsqueak rather choose to merge with. Vata growled once again, Kinder ordering me around. I sighed. Not that I don't like the idea, but you do realize there is a giant turtle that dislikes humans in the Fire Peninsula, right? I never said I wanted us to go there. You learned water bending from the moon and the ocean. It is time to learn from the sun spirit. Vata stated. All right, I'll take the hook. Where do I have to go? I had to admit. 
I was quite interested in this so-called sun spirit. He like the moon and the ocean is in this pitiful place humans call home. As for where exactly Ra is right now well I can't tell for sure. But I can feel him I can feel his presence in the north Vato answered. Ra, like the god of the sun, well, color me impressed. So, do you think this Ra will accept to teach me? I inquired as I walked north. What can I say Vato is a master salesman. You have something that makes most spirits calm and friendly besides Ra like Lara and Louis have no sides, chaos or harmony they help Vato answered. So Louis, La and Ra, I chuckled, creative names there. I laughed. I suppose, the spirit of the skies and the air, Shu, will make you laugh as well Vata chuckled. Nice to know he has a sense of humor. Wait La, Louis, Ra, Shu. The names were starting to make sense so much that I had to take a guess. Is the spirit of the earth Seb? Yes, have you met her? Vatu inquired with curiosity. No, just took an educated guess I answered. Oh yes, with your strange knowledge your mind is a maze of misdirection I found most fun some much information. Though most of it is incomplete or broken, Vata sighed. Well, if you like to read we can visit the spirit library later. I chuckled, you won't find anything too advanced up there. Mostly bad puns and bending ideas. I will take you on that offer Vida replied. Um POV I had an awful feeling that was eating me away. I had a feeling that something more powerful that Ozai was lurking in the shadows. Two days ago I felt a tug my soul felt the pull of a thousand lives. All of them shaking in fear. But of what? Who was responsible for this feeling? That was eating me away. Without any explanation. I felt my body and spirit getting ready for something they knew. But I didn't. Um, are you okay? Katara asked as she and Sokka walked in my tent with concern written all over their faces. I feel like something bigger than Ozai will come up, I muttered. Katara immediately hugged me. I think the stress of this avatar business is getting to you. Maybe it's your mind playing with you, don't worry for now. Perhaps Katara was right. Perhaps all of this was my mind playing games with me. I had been stressed with taking down Ozai, after all. Maybe you are right, I smiled at her. Besides, who can possibly pose a bigger threat than Ozai? Sokka added with a chuckle. And for some reason the image of Akira with a blur on his face came to my mind invading my thoughts for a full second. Yeah, Katara was right, my mind was playing with me. I think I just need a good night of sleep, I yawned. Add me to that package. Sokka smiled, falling asleep a second after that. I really admire his ability to fall asleep at command. Sleep well. I have some stuff clean before being all done, Katara smiled. Thanks Katara sometimes you are the only one that gets me. I smiled at her. The feeling is the same on. Now go to sleep, Katara said as she walked out of the tent. Days like this. I thank the universe for giving me friends like them two strangers that became my family. All in the span of a few months. For that I would be forever grateful. Finding Ra was harder than Vatu had disclaimed a few days ago. And while I enjoyed going through the Fire Nation, like a tourist, I was growing impatient, and all I had to go by was Vatu's feeling that Ra was in the north somewhere. Just keep going north, I will tell you if you need to change directions, Vatu said in annoyance. But before he went back to sleep, I felt a pull. One that he fell to, Ra is here. He just moved he felt us, I immediately spun around, looking in every direction, and nothing. You sure? I asked him. He is waiting right ahead out of this pitiful town in the forest, Vatu answered, sounding nervous well. That was new. Nodding? I walked out of the city on a straight line to the forest, wondering what type of animal Ra was going to be a half-birdman, like the Egyptians had thought him to be, or something else. A half-human chicken ha 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 That is priceless your world is a chaotic delicacy Vado laughed getting the mental image of what I had thought of Ra. Ra is known as the first dragon he like the others is older than me, older than the ancient lion turtles perhaps a dragon. Well that was both cool and intimidating, it also made it easier to look for him. It's not like I can confuse a 10-ton big ass lizard with a rock or something. Human and Vatu, why are you seeking me? A voice echoed in the forest, seemingly coming from every direction as I looked around. I immediately noticed that somehow the forest had been set on fire without me or Vatu noticing. Ra Vatu muttered, I wish to learn fire bending from you. I answered in a straightforward way, knowing honesty was the best policy with someone thousands of years older than you. Why would I give you a human anything? Your kind destroyed my sons and daughters for sport Ra roared, shaking the earth like an earthquake even though he was nowhere to be seen. I understand your anger. But believe me when I say I have nothing not even by correlation to do with what they did to your family. I really understood his rage. But like I had just said, I had done nothing. Nor my blood had anything to do with it. I was from another world before coming here. Intriguing you speak the truth you were artificially created I didn't notice. Because someone fixed you who fixed your call. Ra inquired in a more calm tone. The primordial ones? I answered. I see well, in that case I will train you. I will teach you how to be one with the fire. 
How to be a dragon. Ra said as everything around me crumbled like an illusion, with the fire around me disappearing into nothingness, showing the healthy forest unburn and a massive dragon standing in front of me. I do not care if you use the knowledge I will give you to destroy humanity, or to save it well. Wasn't that ominous? Thanks for giving me this opportunity, I sighed. Lara and Tui, gave you a chance. I don't see why not, Ra stated, as he gestured me to get on his back, my domain is far away from here. Let's go before an idiot tries to claim the banal glory, of trying to slay me, without giving a flying fuck, about what would happen to the sun flying fuck. Haha, <laughs> this dragon will become my BFF. Good luck with that Ra. While neutral hates everyone Vardu stated. Fifteen days later when Vardu said learn the elements from the sources, Ark of the spirits that fuel said elements. I thought it would be something like push and pull like Lauren too. Ra was more the kind of teacher to beat me up over and over and over again, teaching me through pain. Fire is both flexible and immobile you have to be firm, but ready to change Ra said, once again giving me a tail whip against the wall of his massively large cave. Fire fuel with hate and anger is limited you have to fuel your fire with something that can't be changed. And until you find that something you will fail, I will go to sleep until tomorrow. Did anyone get the number of that bitch I said as I walked out of the hole my body had made after the tail whip quoting Vegeta? I would appreciate it if you didn't enrage him. If you die I die. I don't want to reincarnate Vata Warn with a hiss. I know but still, what does him beating me up every day has to do with me learning fire bending? I kinda feel he's using me as a human size punching bag. I sighed as I started my before bed slash after dragon daily routine of healing my body with water bending. If he wanted to kill us, he could do so without much effort right now we can't face him. So he must be trying to teach you something something which is also eluding me. Rage seems to work just fine. I doubt any human beside you can produce such power Vatu added. Maybe on I chuckled knowing this would put Vatu in a mood. That little human is nothing compared to us. Unlike Rava, I chose the best possible human or available to you. But I'll take the compliment I thought as Vata continued his monologue. One that already dwarfed her original pick and current incarnation in power. And there it was his usual response when Rava or Ran were in the conversation topic. It was a real mystery how someone so old was so predictable. I know. I'm awesome. I inwardly chuckled as I added. I will figure it out eventually. For now, let's see how I'm doing with my blood bending now. I sighed as I stood up and walked out of Ra's cave with a fully healed body. To start training once again. After all, training was my thing. When in doubt, train. My training continued with Ra beating me on a daily basis, until one day he said I was ready to leave. This should be normally be happy event. But, I didn't learn anything. I was better at my fire bending. But, besides that I didn't have any knowledge that would make me a master of any kind. Besides, having learned how to make fire at will, I had learned nothing well. I did learn how emotions change the power behind the fire. Hate and anger were apparently easy escapes to fuel the fire. Positive emotions apparently had a much bigger impact than any amount of hate. But alas, it was hard for me to fuel my fire with flowers and rainbows with Vardu inside, and his unyielding hate towards his sister. You are ready. Ra announced fire bending is not about the forms you make to create, said fire is about emotion. I can't teach you not to hate. I can't teach you how to control and erase the emotions Vatu is feeding you. That's something you will have to learn by yourself, he added, sensing I was about to disagree with the unready thing. Well, I did learn the fire dance of the dragons that is something. Aside, fire bending is not about how you push the fire within out is about how you fuel that fire. Ra stated once again. I suppose you would know, being the first firebender and stuff, I chuckled. Before you leave a piece of advice, Ra said turning somehow even more serious than his usually extremely serious self. Don't let Vata change what you are his emotions can be overwhelming. And one day if you are not strong enough they will consume you. So be strong, thanks, I bowed. Now leave I have a 1000 year nap to catch Ra yawned. I smiled at the 10 ton dragon before walking out of his cave. I wonder how Vata will react once he knows my training with Ra was over. After all, he has been sleeping for a week now. As I walked out of the mountain, I couldn't help but wonder in some reminiscing of fear. Was Vati going to change who I was, or would I prove to be stronger emotionally speaking than an immortal spirit? Call. Quote, I turned back at that call like a cat, Crowley was back. But how I had left him at the premium pet daycare at the village nearby Forgetful Valley. Crowley flew directly towards me and started to call angrily at me. Buddy, I told you I had to train. Maybe I should have left him on the Northern Water Tribe. Call. Quote, after a few seconds of angry calls and aggressive wing flutters, he flew to my shoulder and dozed off to sleep. This raven is crazy. I chuckled while wondering how the fuck he recognized me with this new face. It took me roughly three weeks to get out of the mountain where Ra now lay dormant. From there, I took off to the nearest village and paid a cart rider to take me to the closest port. If the other elemental spirits were like Ra, 
then it was safe to assume they were in their respective territories. La and Tui in the Water Tribe territory, Ra in the Fire Nation territory, Shu in the Air Nomads territory, and Seb somewhere in the Earth Kingdom. With that in mind, I decided I would go and learn from Seb next. Not only the Earth Kingdom was the closest one, but it was also the most convenient for now. And along the way, I would practice my fire bending. If what Ra said is true, then I had to focus on changing the fuel of my fire. And only after that find a form. Though having multiple forms can be a problem maybe that's what Ra meant about forms being inconsequential with my fire. Perhaps I had to create a form that worked with all the elements I now had to master. A form to call my own like I did with water bending. Unlike most water benders I didn't use Taikai as my base. I formed my own style, imitating the waves of the water. But that was not going to work now that I had four elements to master. I had to create a style that worked for all of them. A style free like the air, firm like the earth, passionate like the fire, and flexible like the water. I chuckled. It seems I have quite the homework cut out for me. It was quite the task, but I was excited with it. Wondering how the end result would look like it was a delightful thought to have. Um, POV I had found my master, the earthbender Bumi had said. I would find someone who waited before striking. But she didn't want to train me. I can't believe she defeated the boulder soccer said in disbelief. It was an impressive feat Katara admitted. She's the one I saw on the swamp I can't feel it. But she doesn't want to be my master. I sighed. We just have to try harder. Katara smiled. I'm sure she is just angry you won. Perhaps that was true. I probably hurt her pride with that before me. She had been undefeated for more than a year. At least according to her presentation. I can't believe she defeated the boulder soccer repeater once again. I chuckled at soccer. You are right Katara if she's in my destiny. Things will turn out fine. So let's try harder. That's the spirit. Katara smiled, giving me a high five. I can't believe she defeated the boulder. Sokka sighed. But I guess she's okay too. Her earthbending skills are awesome. It's like she's one with the earth. I nodded. Blind bandit, whether you know it or not, you will become my master and friend. Over the course of my trip to the Earth Kingdom, I had come to a definite conclusion. I would not try and find the remaining elementals for a long and painful list of very detailed of reasons. One, besides La and Tui, so far almost every spirit I have encountered has been an asshole on some sort of level. Cheshire being the exception. On Vata's case, I know wants to use me which is pretty obvious and something he hasn't tried to hide. So with his upfront honesty about using me, I can tolerate his behavior because I want to use him too. Our relationship is somewhat symbiotic to say something. That same principle applied with Lara and Tuu. They taught me how to bend, and I helped them in their time of need, by killing Zhao. But besides them every other spirit had been a nightmare, from the mother of all plastic surgery to kindred every single one of them was an asshole. And Ra, well, he filled my quota of shit I can take. Ra, while wise and very powerful, taught me close to nothing. Yes, I did learn about the spiritual principles of fire bending, but I'm pretty sure there are less painful ways to do so I mean. Did he have to beat me up every day I swear, if he wasn't the spirit of the sun? Any anyway, woe after that last wake up call, with the spirits I wanted nothing to do with the elementals or any other spirit unless it was absolutely necessary so, in short, I had to learn how to bend the elements my own way, and I know I have the option of finding a teacher. But fuck that, because if there was one thing I learned from Ra, was that I had to create my own form to bend all elements. The draconic asshole was right switching between styles, would deliberately put me in a bad spot, giving the enemy time to attack in the interval. It takes me to move from one element to the other. Maybe I could create some kind of mixed martial form for them all. Vata will be livid. I chuckled, while wondering why had Vata gone into hibernation without even telling me about it. Perhaps merged spirits had to do this every now and then. The show never specified. So I guess everything is possible. I am after all, in a very grey area. When it comes to being the, or I should rather say a avatar. Sir, the next stop in 8 hours in the CD Merchant Pier, the guy I had paid to keep me updated said, as he entered my private cabin, I had paid with some money I had stolen from some thieves, which by the rules of the gods, makes it legal. Thanks, I nodded and as the guy left my room, an epiphany came to me. While it was true I had no need for the elementals to teach me bending, I did need a spirit for something else, which kinda contradicted my entire previous resolution, but sometimes, it's best to sacrifice in order to win. This spirit was one I knew for a fact had the knowledge I desired to get the power I needed. One Shin Tong, and his library, all human and spiritual knowledge in a single place for me to exploit. It was just what I needed, within the spirit library I would have access to the knowledge I required to master all the elements. And if Zhao was permitted to enter, heck I had a guaranteed pass to the damn library. Well, it seems I have to deal with one more spirit. I chuckled, maybe it wasn't what I had originally intended to do. 
but it would work just fine. The next I woke up to the one of the crew members of the ship, meaning I had arrived. Like usual, I ordered one of the locals to find me a cart and pays a hefty sum. I embarked to the desert, where I would meet my last spiritual stop. According to Guy I had hired to take me to the desert, it would take us a month and a half to get there. In the meantime, I would use this time to train my fire and water bending in a small scale, using only my mind to bend the energy around me. It would help me learn control, something I lacked with fire control, and focus, something I needed for both, and it would give me something to do along the way. As a POV, someone had killed more than a dozen soldiers in one of the no-important barracks in the northeast side of the outskirts of the Fire Islands. The reports said his bending his raw power had no equal, that a single punch of his fire brought the battalion to their knees. Interesting, not impressive, but interesting anyone with decent skill could beat the battalion of useless people. So perhaps this criminal worthy of being captured tortured, and then trained to be a loyal dog. Loyal to me. The stranger's name on his registration was Simbad, a name for my target. Girls get ready, we have a dog to capture, and my sources are pointing he is going to the Earth Kingdom. I ordered my entire Lee. Oh, is this man Akira Tai Lee giggled doing a cartwheel, landing right beside me. No, this man is a firebender. Akira is off the grid for now. Aside. So, we are hunting someone else besides your brother and uncle, Joy Mai said in her usual emotionless tone. Reports say he has quite the explosive talent, so I figured we could train him to obey. I smiled at them, like I did with you too. Mai looked away in fear. Good, while Tyler, well kept being Ty Lee. Oh, that means we are adding a boy to the group. Ty Lee giggled in excitement, yeah, I knew she feared me, yet she never showed that outright was she brave or stupid, perhaps both. That question eluded me sometimes, maybe I had to try a bit harder. It took me two weeks to arrive at the desert where I would find the spirit library, with no clear idea of where to go or what to expect besides the sandbenders in the area. I decided to go to the middle of the desert and start my journey from there. The desert was like I had expected harsh and unforgiving with the cruel but fair winds of the desert slowing me down by the minute. But I had no doubts I would succeed. I was prepared for the challenges ahead of this desert. Most of my life in the Northern Water Tribe had been spent honing my body and mind for the harsh environments of the world. Not only that, but I am the Dark Avatar, meaning all my natural skills were drastically boosted thanks to Vatu, meaning I was built for this. Besides, my stay in this hellish place was going to be short, of that I was sure, thanks to my water sense. It was a matter of hours before I found the library, the one place bound to have more water, than this dry, unforgiven nightmare. Let's see, I said as I closed my eyes, letting all the water around me guide me to my destination. The north side of the desert was mostly dry, and so was the south save for a few exceptions, on the center. I felt something, but I wasn't entirely sure it was the library. For all I knew it could be an oasis of sorts or a settlement for the bandits of the area. But if that I had felt wasn't an oasis or a bandit camp, then this was most definitely what I was looking for. But even then by my calculations, it would take me roughly 10 hours to get there. 10 hours that in the case of me being wrong, would go down the drain. Well, I guess I have no other choice but walk. I sighed, knowing full well I had little options when it came to bending right now. The water in the area was almost non-existent. Meaning I didn't have enough water around to utilize for movement. I barely had enough to keep myself fully hydrated at all times, and fire bending with this environment was for obvious reasons totally out of the question. But perhaps I had a third option, earth bending, while the traditional way of earth bending was out of the question for me. Right now, mostly because I had no idea how to do it, nor where to begin with sand bending, on the other hand, should be easy. Sand bending was an alternative style of earth bending that had been specifically adapted for use in the Siwong Desert, Arca where I am right now, by the people that live here, Arca mostly bandits. But what makes this style easier for me is that this style resembles air and water bending more than earth bending. And while I had no idea how to bend air yet, I was a master in water bending. It's worth a shot. I shrugged as I tried my bending motions focusing on the sand pulling and pushing over and over again, but nothing. This continued for an hour with me getting nothing until in a fit of rage. I did the pull and push, but not the same way I am used to. It was more firm. This time, my push created a wave of sand of massive proportions, scaring a few unaware animals under the sand. Fuck, yes. I laughed, and while it did take me an hour to get some sort of result, I knew now how to duplicate it. It was like water bending, but I had to be firmer. Stand my ground, instead of redirecting the energy like with water, I had to force it in a way to obey. Core. I looked at Crawley and his worried expression, he probably still had PTSD from my last inventive move, where I had fucked my body for over a week, don't worry buddy, this is easier than keeping a body in the air for hours. I winked at the worried bird, and without further ado, 
I started to bend a wave of sand as I had seen on the show Toph do with Earth. But unfortunately, I had failed to foresee my lack of control and crash after advancing a mile. Cool. Word or, I told you so. That was what Crowley I thought my bird companion was saying with that specific call. Ugh, I stood up from the sand in a fit of cough. I know, but I just need more practice. I just moved a mile or so from a starting point. That alone would have taken me at least half an hour or so on foot, and all it took me was around a minute. I smiled, shaking the sand off my body, getting ready to start surfing on this desert again. Was I good? Ha! Huh. No, was Crowley right, and this would end badly for me, probably. But I was having too much fun to care for the consequences right now. I was basically surfing on the sand. How fucking cool is that? This is awesome. I laughed as I darted forward once again, riding on the sand with Crowley digging little claws on my chest. Fuck. I shouted as I fell on the sand once again. Well, it was clear by this point. This was going to take a while, but I was having lots of fun with it, probably too much fun. But, as I said, it didn't matter. I was getting a kick out of this. The rush, the fear of falling, the adrenaline coursing through my body, was it felt like riding a roller coaster, without a seat belt, a suicidal thought in my world. But here, that was just your average Monday for some. Haha, -ha. I chuckled standing up, once again. Let's try that again, Crowley eyed me with a defeated look as he flew to my backpack, taking out a coconut shell, and putting it on his little head as a homemade helmet. Crowley for the love of you know what, that's probably a smart move, after 20 or 30 violent crashes and a fair amount of concussions. I had finally arrived where I wanted to be Wan Shin Tong's library. Well, this is it. I smiled as I walked to the entrance, seeing how the library building, though large in size, was mostly buried under the desert sands, with only its tallest spire visible from the surface. Well, it's best it stays this way. People usually don't appreciate knowledge of any kind. I sighed as I waved the idea of trying to dig the library out, wasting no time. I dived inside the library, using the water I had collected to slowly levitate to avoid a violent crash that would piss off the local librarian. As soon as I landed, the floor squeaked underneath me, showing it was outstandingly clean. This sound announced my presence, and in the blink of an eye, a giant owl was standing in front of me. Humans are not welcome here. Leave, the owl stated with a frown. Lovely. I know. But would you turn down someone seeking knowledge to improve himself? I smiled. Yes. Now leave, the owl said without missing a beat. All right, Akira. What do you know about this overgrown chicken nugget? He loves knowledge. He hates intruders. And he hates people using the knowledge of his library for war and violence. Time to kindle eye. All right, I'll be honest. I merged with Vatu. I sighed, and as soon as the words Vadu left my mouth, the spirit took a few steps back in caution. I want to show him there are other ways other than chaos. Not really. But I can't his emotions affect me. An empath, the owl said as a matter of fact. I nodded. I was told this library would provide me the knowledge to control not only my emotions, but the elements I gained a connection thanks to Vatu. At first, I tried to learn the elements with other benders. But time to bag the deal. But every person I meet wants me to join the war. And I don't want to join any sides. I'll have one on my own. Thank you very much. War. It is always the same with humans fighting each other for nothing. The owl shook his head sadly. Very well. I can see you have quite a journey ahead of you. And if my library can help you. I can't in good conscience say no. But like every human before you. You must pay the price. Knowledge for knowledge. Well, pick your poison, I chuckled. I have water-bending scrolls and unrecorded future knowledge. The owl blinked in curiosity, like a child seeing candy. Future knowledge? The spirit asked with a bit of hesitation. Yes, I don't have scrolls of that, but I can assure you, it's the real deal. I smiled, ready to explain to him what a radio was, and how it would in the future work. The one thing I knew by memory, thanks to my science fair, in my original world. Very well. I will take a scroll and a something about the future to satiate my curiosity. The owl sighed, taking my scroll and flying away. Not without saying, you are free to roam and stay in the library for as long as you want. I have one final request. I said, flying towards him, a few dozen floors down. If anyone enters don't tell them about me. You know Vatu and his rivalry with Rava, so keep my existence a secret between us. I don't see why not, the owl nodded, going back to file the scroll I had given him. Two weeks later the amount of knowledge in the library was. Well, I had no words to describe it. It had from culture to bending styles and more, so each day was a unique experience for me. Right now, I was focusing on learning earth bending, and apparently, I had a knack for it. Wan Shai Tong said that much, he was a nice spirit. I kind of felt bad for lying to him, but I had no choice. For my earthbending training, I had decided to deprive myself of my vision completely, trying to accomplish what Toph had done, seeing the world through the earth. Gotta admit, it's quite the struggle to do so. If I forget even for a moment, 
that I have to use seismic sense to walk and see, I end up crashing with something. For my airbending training, well, I had yet to accomplish anything with it. It seems I had found my opposite element, and no matter how much research I do, I don't get any results. Wang Shai Tong theorizes that my personality and bending style are aggressive, and that aggressive nature clashes with the usually calm and peaceful state of the air. Perhaps he was right, but in the end, it didn't matter, the air was going to submit one way or another. Now, for my fire training well. I was banned from doing so. I can't blame the big guy for banning me from doing that. 90% of this library is paper. One wrong move and thousands of years of knowledge would go down the drain. What an intriguing way to master earthbending, Wan Shin Tong commented. Well, I have to forget about my other senses to become one with the earth. And that sounded remarkably hippie I chuckled. Well, times like this. I am glad I still have a few rooms empty. I dare not think what would happen. If you practice close to the books it would take me decades to clean them all. The owl shuddered in fear, just imagining it. Well, good thing is not gonna happen. I chuckled. It is, the owl nodded, or at least I felt he nodded. Sometimes the image I get from my seismic sense is like a drawing from a four-year-old. I can't wait to see the radio in person. It will be the first time knowledge is here. Before out he added with giddy excitement. Ha ha ha. And wait until they invent the TV. I chuckled. Evie, what is that I wish to know sorry buddy? All I know about it is that it basically raised me as a child. It was the evening of my third month in the library of Wan Shai Tong. The winds of the desert are howling outside, beating the walls of the library with such strength I was able to feel them through my seismic sense during these three months. I had achieved a mastery over earth bending I found outstanding for the time I had invested. I had yet to bend metal, but I excelled in all the other sub-bending styles, including lava bending. As for air, I have yet to show any progress. But I know it's a matter of when not if. But having mastered one element was more than enough, meaning I only had two more elements to master. Of course, I hadn't just focused on that, no. I had other plans for myself, and for those plans, I had focus on learning as much as I could about spiritual bending. Reason why I was meditating each day for hours. How is the training going? The ever-curious owl inquired, snapping me out of my long reverie. With a smile, I stood of the ground to greet Wan Shai Tong, a spirit that had proven not all of them are assholes. I have noticed your spirit becoming karma, which means you are learning how to control your empath abilities. Wise of you to do that while Vata was hibernating. He remarked once again, a month ago he had confirmed spirits hibernated every now and then, reason why Vata had been so silent. The grey-feathered owl pulled a scroll of his feathers and tossed said scroll over to me. This is a first edition about empathic conditions, he chuckled. I have no idea if this will help, but it won't hurt to read it. I looked up to the owl and smiled. Thank you. My friend anytime, the owl said, with something reminiscent of a smile, as he sat down beside me. The poor spirit was so lonely. He enjoyed watching me learn about stuff he already knew. Well, let's see before I was able to finish my sentence. I felt something touching the entrance people one, not, two, three, four, and an elephant. No, that was Appa, meaning, Arm and his friends were here. Soon after that, a crash followed by a bunch of people Katara, Sokka, scaling down a rope inside the library. The moment their bodies entered the library, I was able to see them all, detail them, An, Sukha, Katara, the mysterious extra, and something else flying around in the air, giving me mixed readings. Intruders. Wa Shin Tong hissed his feathers puffing in anger. Is the avatar the other one? I provided him with some information. I will see them out, the owl stated in anger probably thanks to me. I had told him about Sokka's plan to use his library, and thanks to that owl was now flying towards the new visitors ready to kick them out, while I debated whether if I should face them or not. Fuck it, let's say hi. With that resolution ahead, I stood up and slowly made my way to greet the team avatar. A middle-aged man commented, judging by his tone of voice, while looking at one of the pillars inside the library. Oh, it's breathtaking. The spirit spared no expense in designing this place. He turned to look at the group, pointing at the pillar once more. Look at those beautiful buttresses. Katara started to giggle for no apparent reason, while the man continued to marvel at a design within the library. What's so funny? The man asked clearly as confused as me. Nothing. We just like architecture, uncommented, and by the vibrations on the earth and water. I could tell he was holding back, trying not to laugh. Well, regardless of what they had found funny. The party was about to end, for my feathered friend was about to make an entrance. As if cue. The rustling noises of one shy tongue flying echoed through the area letting them know something was near. At this, Sokka and Katara run behind a pillar, while ungrab the unknown man hide behind another pillar. A rope, I commented, walking over the bridge. I suppose that's a way to enter, I hummed. One Shai Tong looked at me, confused as to why I was here, but decided to ignore my change of plans and walks over the bridge, examining the rope with a scrutinizing look. At this, 
I felt him craning his head around the pillar he had hid, looking at us with curiosity. Before I got the chance to scare the crap out of Arn, my owl friend turns his head around owl style and said, I know you're back there. At this, Arn gasped and tried to hide again. But, before he can do so, the unknown they had brought walks towards one shy Tong with a wide smile. Hello, I'm Professor Zay, head of anthropology at Ba Sing Si University. Zay, was he part of the canon? God, my knowledge is either lacking, or I have already changed everything around me. Wa Shin Tong scoffed, you should leave the way you came. He added, while pointing to the rope, unless you want to become a stuffed head of anthropology. Oh, dang, that hurt me. I'm not even being targeted, Jesus. This owl knows how to roast. Hum, I don't think he would fit with your collection. I chuckled, getting a low light-hearted chuckle in response from the owl. Sukka seeing there was not one but two humans close to the 12-foot owl, approached the professor and asked while looking at the spirit, are you the spirit who brought this library to the physical world? Wan Shai Tong nodded, indeed, I am Wan Shai Tong. He who knows 10,000 things. And you are obviously humans, which, by the way, are no longer permitted in my study. Sukha looked at the owl, and then at me, and he's a cat. Maybe, I chuckled. Arn at this hovered towards his friend, and with a frown asked, What do you have against us? You clearly let him, he pointed at me. Learn, well, unlike you. I don't give a fuck about this war. I did give a fuck, but on a minor scale. A much minor one. I know about you, Avadarang. I know what you seek, and I will not allow you to use the knowledge of my library. 4. War. Plans. One shy Tong hissed ruffling his feathers, ready to kill them if necessary. My friend here informed me of your plans to use my library for nefarious motives. So leave or die, guilty as charged. I told him. I winked at the group, who was now looking at me with an array of different emotions. Aun was confused, Katara was angry, and Sokka, well, he was Sokka. As soon as I said I was the one that had sold them out, Team Avatar refused to go. Looking at me with anger, Aung, in particular, was mostly confused, more so than angry, but wanted an explanation of how I knew of their plan, and why I had stopped the as for Sokka and Katara. Their faces were scrunched up in anger. With a smile, I offer one shy tongue away to solve this, a jewel of sorts for access to the library. If they won, he would allow them to check his books. If they lost, they would be forever banned. The ever-pacifist spirit was reluctant to accept but knowing they would try and sneak inside regardless of what he said, and that this would help me on my training. He accepted my idea. Just for educational purposes, of course. You say you don't like violence, yet you are having us fight him, arm pointed at me. If I win, you will forget about this library and never come back. I said before my feathery friend had the chance to answer. Arm glared at me. Why are you doing this? All I want is to save the world regardless of your motives. The knowledge in here won't help you. I chuckled. You are from the Water Tribe, Sokka stated, holding his boomerang tight in anger. How can you do this? Haven't you lost someone you care about? Don't you want to stop this? Don't you know the pain people are going through? Lost someone. Pain. What a naive little idiot. I know pain. More than you can possibly comprehend. I replied coldly. The rules are simple if my representative wins. You four will be forbidden from entering my library. Wan Shai Tong said, as we entered my training room, the one room empty of anything valuable, you three can fight him at the same time, he has stated he has no problems in doing so, I'm side. If this is the only way, I will do it, fine by me, Katara hissed, look at that the little girl has some bite, perhaps this will be interesting. Trader, Sokka muttered, getting into position, don't hold back, or I'm going to break you guys. I winked at them, deciding not to use my bending at full unless it was absolutely necessary meaning I would only be using seismic sense and water sense this battle. Don't worry, never intended to, Sokka snarled at me, and at that, I started to chuckle. I was talking to Katara and Arn, you don't have anything to hold back. I smirked at him. Sokka growled and was ready to attack, but I stopped him with a passive gesture of my hand as I walked towards Wan Shai Tong. You said you played various musical instruments, right? The owl nodded with a confused expression blossoming on his face. All right, play something I can tap my foot to while I kick them out of the library. I said with a winning smile. All right, Wan Shai Tong chuckled, pulling something reminiscent of a guitar out of his feathers. I will set up the mood for you. As soon as the spirit started to play his music, I turned to the arm gang. With a smile, now, where were we? And with a quick flick of my hand, I invited them to start this fight. Come on. Sokka was the first one to rush at me, throwing his boomerang at me, which I caught without any problems. From behind, I sensed Katara trying to water whip me. But I swiftly move out of the way while throwing the boomerang I had caught at her. The boomerang hit her on the head, throwing her to the ground, unconscious. This attack had two motives. One, you always take the healer first. Two, it was the easiest way to enrage Arn. Arn immediately rushed at me, and so did Sokka, with a smile and feeling their attacks before they even managed to do them. 
I sidestepped to the right just enough to dodge the sloppy assault of punches Sokka was trying to deliver. You seriously need some training. I chuckled as I swiftly punched Sokka in the solar plexus, knocking the wind out of the undertrained water tribe soldier, bringing him down to his knees. Good night, I said as I added a quick kick to his jaw knocking him out. Um, by this point was behind me throwing gusts of wind at me, completely forgetting about his pacifist persona. He just wanted to beat me up, strong attacks. But you are getting sloppy, force without skill is meaningless. I commented as I dodged his assault while walking towards him. Arn said nothing and tried to sweep me off my feet with a gust of wind on the ground. But this didn't work, for I had jumped out of the way a few seconds before he even tried to do such a thing, and now I was in front of him. With a smile and a quick blow to his face, Arn was wide open and begging for another attack, and well I obliged him, putting a knee into the young avatar stomach, doubling him over. Once again, he was wide open, so I followed that up with a quick rising uppercut to his chin, knocking him out. Well, that was easy. I chuckled, but before I was able to fully enjoy my victory, I felt a powerful surge of spiritual energy behind me, twirling around. I saw not on, but the manifestation of his anger, the avatar state, his eyes, and arrow tattoos glowing white, and from his body anger almost as strong as the one I had felt on Vatu emanating like a broken dam. Ha ha ha. Now this is fun. I laughed getting a tingling sensation on my spine that I couldn't really tell what was it. Show me what you can do with hundreds of years of experience. Try and defeat me. Things had certainly turned interesting in the last few seconds. Aung cried in anger, many voices coming out of him shaking the ground around him, before he lunged forward, quickly flying towards me with a wind-like sphere around him, his eyes glowing white. His face reeking of anger, promising a lot of pain for me, should I fail to win. Then midway, he moved his left hand in a swift and precise motion to the right, this action was followed by a hundred rocks flying my way. Still, reflex kicked in, and I created a wall of solid ice, shielding me from his earth-bending attack, while I tried to cleave his legs with a sharp water blade. Arm noticed this in time, and stopped my attack with a powerful gust of wind. Arm growled once again as he gathered water around him, molding it into a water-like drill. Once this water attack was fully formed, he dashed at me, breaking the earth on his path. I knew this time he was going too fast for me to avoid, so I just stood there, creating water attack of my own to block his. Soon enough, our attacks clashed, creating a rumbling echo through the room. He was the avatar all right, any other waterbender would be dead trying to block this. But not me, when it came to waterbending. I had more experience and power than him, and I could notice that much, his air attacks on the avatar state were lethal. But when it came to the other elements he had yet to master, they lacked something, not bad. I commented with a small smile, as I noticed how the weight of my own waterbending attacks, were dragging the avatar state powered Ung down. It seems you can't fully draw from the past avatar's experiences, when you enter that state unconsciously. Good to know. I chuckled pushing him a few meters back with a wave of water. But with a small tornado to break my attack, he soon recovered and pushed back hard, this time mostly using air bending attacks, which were exponentially stronger than his earth and water bending ones. By a big margin, I had to admit, he was strong, very strong, leaving me no more option, but start dodging his attacks, while I attempted to pierce his arms and legs, with a barrage of compressed water bullets. But these proved useless, against his wind-like sphere, that destroyed my commonly lethal projectiles into nothingness, before they even managed to hit him. Ah, uh, Ung cried in many voices, throwing a violent gust of wind my way too wide to dodge. So I stood firm, creating a dome of water and ice around me. That proved most useless, as his attack broke my defenses, and trashed me to the wall of the room, dislocating my arm. Shit. I snarled, jumping back to recover, while covering my arm in Kai-infused water to heal it, days like this. I love I learned how to heal. I continued to fight him while I healed my arm. Which, thanks to my intensive training in the spiritual arts with Wan Shai Tong, took less than a minute with a smile. I dashed forward dodging his attacks, while slowly infiltrating water on his wind sphere, for it was impossible to make a perfect defense. It took me a while, but when I had enough water, I molded said water into a hand and grabbed his head, pushing it down to the ground with great force. I then snapped my fingers, gathering all the water around, creating hundreds of water balls that I threw at him before he recovered. Blood splattered everywhere. Did you win? Wan Shai Tong inquired. Not even close. I shook my head off, all my coordination was barely enough to break his nose and give him some minor cuts. He was still fully functional. Arn stood up, his eyes still shining white with some blood coming out his mouth, his eyes staring at me with a deadly cold glare. Fuck, I inwardly cursed before he created another wild-like sphere around him, and with a battle cry, he darted at me throwing several gusts of wind. That like before too wide to dodge and too strong to block, the attacks pushed me to the wall with such strength, 
that I felt several bones broke upon the impact of each gust of wing. Once his relentless assault was done, I stood up, covering at least an 80% of my body in healing water. Fuck you really got me there, I said panting. It seemed only using water bending against him was a poor choice, one that I will rectify right now. Whatever. I guess now's as good a time as any to let the world know. I smiled. I really wanted to save the fact there was another avatar for another time, enough holding back. I chuckled. My merge with Vatu was very different than the merge Arn and Rava had. For one, I wasn't going to reincarnate. Vatu extended my lifespan, and for two, I had access to the Dark Avatar state since the day we merged. I didn't like to use it thought, the emotions were too strong, changing me into a real monster, at least in Minset. But right now, I didn't have much of a choice. Time to let my monster come out and play, time to even the field a bit. My body started to glow in a dark red dim light, with my eyes shining crimson red. Well, if I were you I would try to win, because as soon as my body recovers, I will show you a world of pain. Brat, Aunt stood immobile, his spiritual energy switching from anger to confusion, as if he didn't believe what he was seeing, which gave me more than enough time to heal my very broken body. Well, you are very stupid lesson number one of combat, don't let the enemy sense it being himself. That's like the most important rule. I chuckled as I basically teleported behind him, bending the water in my body to fly and move too fast for him to even see. Realizing the battle was still on, the stunned avatar staggered back, not knowing where I had gone, until he bumped me and turned around just to receive a water explosion with enough strength to bring him to his knees. If you were in control of your actions, this would be challenge. But alas, you are not rage can only take you so far, I commented, kneeling down too so that I could make eye contact with him. Growling, he stood up trying to attack me, but he was too slow, and I trapped his legs between two boulders, with earth bending. While slamming his head with another water explosion, Arn fell harshly, crashing against the ground. I would use fire, but I promised I wouldn't I also didn't want to kill him. Arn roared once again, throwing the most powerful gust of wind so far, that I managed to block. But even then, it managed to push me back a bit, with a smile I immediately recoiled, with a powerful blow of water myself. The blow itself propelled him against the wall, breaking a few of his bones. Staggering, he tried to stand up, but his avid estate receded, and he felt down, blood flowing from his broken body. He was done, but I wasn't with a wicked smile. I created several ice lances around, ready to paint the room with his blood. Enough. One Shai Tong said in a pleading tone, you are letting the power control you. Blinking in shock and realization, I melted the ice lances and dropped to the ground, undoing my avatar state, realizing that if it wasn't for one Shai Tong, I would have ended on without hesitation. It was now clear. I needed to train more, otherwise, I would one day do something I might regret. I apologize. One, I sighed with my hands shaking. I could still feel the need to kill him vibrating in my body. I let the power take away my control. Laying cold and unmoving on the floor, rested Team Avatar, while my whole body trembled in shock. Not because I had been close to killing them, but because I had been very close to losing control, and it felt good, very good. The feeling of overwhelming power coursing to my every fiber intoxicated my mind with a rush of pleasure, enough to drive any man insane. I had no idea things would play out like that. The first time I entered this avid estate was after the fusion. It was part of it. I hadn't used it. I knew how to use it, but I hadn't had the need to use it. Until today, I was confident if push came to shove. I would be able to control myself, mostly because I hadn't had any problems keeping Vatu and his emotions at bay. But this was totally different. Well, I ain't ready to use that. I repeated once more with a sigh as I healed on. Your avid estate is vastly different to Rava's, Wan Shai Tong stated. How they differ it's a mystery, but they feel completely different. Well, whatever it was, I had to learn how to control it. If I was to kill people, I wanted to be completely conscious, not high or mad with power. The idea of not being in control of my actions sickened me, and it was something I was not going to allow. But at the very least, this slip of control would keep on out of my way. I knew that much. After all, people should either be loved or crushed. For if you do them minor damage, they will get their revenge. But if you cripple them emotionally or physically, there is nothing they can do. So I knew that if I ever needed to injure someone, I would do it in such a way that I would not have to fear their vengeance. And I had crushed him. Um, Katara muttered as she stood up, rubbing her head in pain where the boomerang I had thrown hit her. Um, she shouted as soon as she saw his broken body. Don't disrupt me. I said as I restrained her body with water. You can't heal him. You lack the skill to do so. I sighed. He'll be fine. Anger. Hate fear, every emotion close to that spectrum was emanating from her. She hated me. The funny thing is that her hatred made me feel at home. It reminded me of my time in the Northern Water Tribe. He came close to killing me, you know. I chuckled, he was very close to ending my life. 
I just retaliated in kind. Arm would never lower himself to your level, Katara spat. I hummed, maybe not consciously. But when the boy goes to sleep and the beast comes to play, all rules and morals are gone, the avatar state, Katara muttered in shock. Yeah, I chuckled, he broke half of my body. It hurt like a bitch. Regardless of what he did, he doesn't deserve what you did, Katara hissed. Maybe, but if you think the Fire Lord will be more gentle, then this war is already lost for you. Maybe I went a bit overboard, but fuck you. Katara, if it weren't for me going avatar on him, I would have died. This is MMMMM. I had finally had enough and silenced Katara with a piece of ice covering her mouth. She is rather annoying, one shy Tong commented. Yes, I nodded with a chuckle. How long do you think it will take you to heal him? The owl inquired as he inspected Arm on the floor. An hour or two, I answered. I could speed the process to minutes using that power, but I'm not exactly comfortable using it. Wise, it's best at least for now. Wan Shai Tong agreed. After healing Arm completely, I helped Wan Shai Tong carry them out, with Katara still on her ice binds, to stop the temperamental teenage girl from doing something stupid. There you go be free, I commented, putting her in the ground. Who the heck is he? Toph inquired, jumping into a fighting position, but by her stance, it was clear she couldn't see me well, probably because of all the sand. He is the one that almost killed Arm. Katara spat. I am. I nodded. Without skipping a beat, Toph attacked me with a wide attack of sand that I dodged with ease. We don't have to fight, not anymore I sighed. Well, maybe you don't but I do. Toph said, continuing her sloppy assault of attacks that, thanks to her messed up seismic sense on this uneven terrain, were pretty easy to avoid. Enough. One shy Tong growled, until today, my library was at peace. But every time humans come they ruin my peace, his eyes glowed at that. I will sink my library back to the spirit world. Are you coming? He added while looking at me. Yes, I nodded, jumping back to the library. On POV at first I was angry at him. Then I rationalized this anger was unbecoming of me. Why did his presence annoy me so much? And why did this feeling of anger didn't feel like it was mine? It felt like someone was feeling it for me. It felt forced, whoever this guy was he wasn't worse than Ozai. And yet I disliked him more than Ozai for no apparent reason. Then, when I was hesitating, he gave me a reason to hate him. He hit Katara, knocking her down. And now I wanted to beat him. For the first time in my life I wanted to beat someone up. But even then something, like a whisper was begging me to kill him. But I didn't have the heart to kill anyone. Life was precious no matter what, no matter how much I hated him right now. Though it seemed my anger meant nothing to him, for like Sokka and Katara, he defeated me rather swiftly. But before I blacked out, something forcibly pushed me back, like taking control of my body, while putting me in the back seat. Unlike the previous times I had entered the Avid Estate, this one felt like my emotions for him, forced. And I knew I was going to kill him no matter what I wanted. Or so I thought. The next thing I know, the library is gone and I'm on top of Appa. And while I had no proof or recollection of what happened after I was knocked out, I knew for some reason I had lost. Who was that guy? I muttered deep in thought. I continued my studies under one Shai Tong, while looking for a way to control my power without losing my sanity. There is no point in being strong if you can't control yourself. But I also had other things in mind. What to do after I finished my training. One day, I would be done. And then what? Was that all my life would be? I wanted a goal something beyond being strong. But I just didn't know what I really wanted besides being strong. Beyond strength. I didn't know who I really was. Long time no see, Vatu whispered inside my head, stopping my train of thought abruptly. I see you humiliated rather. How delightful, Vatu. I thought you were asleep, I inwardly muttered. I was, I can't always be conscious, apparently this merging makes me lethargic, Vatu stated with a bored tone, and I wouldn't have woke up if it weren't for you. You woke me up, I did. I inquired. The avid state as you call it, taps into my power, Vatu clarified. While you can bend the four elements without tapping into my power, you have to use my essence to enter the avid state. Therefore you woke me up, I didn't have to use his power to bend all four elements. Sorry. But I didn't understand the part where you said I don't need you to bend all the elements, Vata sighed. I didn't say you didn't need me, mortal. I said you didn't use my power when bending the elements. You use me as a conduit of sorts. You don't use my spiritual power, you use yours. But when entering the avatar state, you use both of us spirits at the same time. I see. I muttered. Though I didn't have anything to do with that delightful bloodlust you were exhibiting it was delightful, Vatu whispered, as if I was going to believe in that. We both know you try to mold my thoughts and urges to your liking. I replied plainly. Oh, I do I have no need to lie. But that show you gave Rava was all you. Vatu laughed. My power just enhanced what you already had. I didn't give you any more. Well, this is taking me nowhere. Well, regardless if you are right or not I'm trying to study. 
I sighed, and find a goal right. Barta snickered. At least, I have the intention of finding other goals, I chuckled bitterly. You only think about ending Rava. How sad is that your life revolves around her, one might say you love her. Don't you dare to say I love her. Vatu exploded with anger. All right? I shrugged, but tell me one goal that doesn't involve her. I, I Vata growled. Fine then, how about we find a goal to accomplish together one that doesn't involve Rava. At least directly he offered. We are stuck together anyway so, it should be at the very least educational. I hummed very well. I have nothing to lose. Yes, yes you do. Akira, your sanity, and, well, that's about it. Perfect. Vata growled. How about we kill all humans bringing total damnation to this world? Seriously. I, I had no words for that offer. Like if you are going to try and corrupt me, be more subtle, Jesus fucking Christ. It was a comedic comment. In your mind, you call it chaotic humor. I thought it was fit for me to try such a thing and see. Vatu muttered, with a tone, dare I say disappointed I didn't laugh. Well, to be fair, I didn't expect you to tell a joke not even one in bad taste. I replied, with a sigh. But it was funny now that I know it was a joke very well. Vatu sighed, how about? Ha, huh, you are right, this is hard. Ha, huh, told you. I chuckled. You know it's impressive how calm you are with the fact that I want to corrupt you. Vatu laughed, perhaps you are like me. A creature of chaos. I don't gain shit by worrying right now. I sighed, and, well I consider myself chaotic neutral alignment wise. Oh yeah. I saw a game in your mind that uses that terminology Vada commented. E-N-D. I smiled with a surge of happiness remembering one of the games I had grow up with as a child. That's the one Vata yawned, anyway I have to go gr I hate this. I never had to sleep before this it's Beckmingano quote. And like he had come, he was gone my mind felt empty of his presence once again. Youthful fire bear, EOV, my destined rival had disappeared, but I knew it was against his will. There was no other way he would go back on his word of fighting me. And so, I waited roaming the spirit lands with one mission at hand finding him. Days turned into weeks, weeks into months, until... I felt something. His presence, my rival was near. I could already taste a battle. I am on my way. Akira POV as I was reading the arts of peace and mind. I felt something. Something familiar. Oh, no. That bear was coming shit I had forgotten about my dual promise. And now that I am in the spirit world, he will surely come for me. Well, hello there. That voice. I knew who it was. Cheshire. Good to see you back here. The cat purred, his head and body going separated ways. Do you know there is an peculiar bear coming down this way burning everything on its path, while repeatedly shouting challenge? I had a feeling. I groaned. Oh ho ho ho, how delightful the cat smiled in joy as he materialized some popcorn out of thin air. This will be very entertaining. Fine, let me stop him before he burns down the library. I sighed as if summoned, one immediately teleported in front of me. No one, it's going to burn anything here. Do what you must but protect my tomes, the owl stated. What about your non-violence policy? I chuckled. Every policy has a loophole, one shy Tong said. Now go and murder that bear. Wow, you went from zero to a hundred real quick. I chuckled as I walked out of the library to fight the bear like I had promised. Defeating the Ursok, the fire bear, was somewhat easy. Though we destroyed part of the forest, close to the library, he had a lot of spirit no pun intended. After his defeat, the bear decided to stay by my side, so that he could have a rematch, while I learned and practiced how to control my avatar state. Or how I called it, my assault mode, it feels better. Considering how bloodthirsty I get with it, are you okay? Cheshire inquired, worried that I was shaking. What a stupid question, am I okay? Huh. It takes every ounce of my willpower and more to keep my mind in check. It's like fighting your instincts, you can't do it without suffering. It's deeply upsetting. But I wasn't going to let my power control me. I was the captain of my fucking body. If I wanted to kill, I would do it with a calm mind, not because every time I used the avatar state, or as I call it, my assault mode, the feeling the need to destroy would get stronger, more intoxicating. Meaning, whatever that was going on inside of me with that power was only growing stronger, which left me with little to no choices in the training matter. If I wanted to get a hand of it, I would have to force myself into the state for long periods of time. In theory, after extended periods of time, my body and mind should acclimate to the state. That or kill me, one of the two. But for me to do that, I had to be alone, without anyone close to kill. Otherwise, it would be impossible to get anything from that training. In short, I had to get the fuck out of the spirit realm, and find a very secluded spot. Well, it seems I'm going to the Southern Water Tribe, the most secluded and unimportant place on the Avatar world. Alright? I sighed while rubbing my forehead. I'm leaving, back to the human world. One shy Tong inquired, closing a book he was reading for the hundredth time. I looked up to him and nodded. Yes, I need to be in a calm environment, so that I don't go on a murderous rampage, 
I see, the L side. Wait, you were about to kill us. Ursok inquired, getting a nod from an answer, neat. What the fuck is wrong with that bear, anyway? Do you have the scrolls the copies I asked you? A few weeks ago, I had asked one to make copies for all the airbending, earthbending, and firebending scrolls in the library. I did. One shy Tom nodded, giving me the scrolls in a six foot tall wooden box that weighed at around 100 pounds. Maybe I should have selected fewer scrolls. Well, my friend, I hope we can see each other soon. Wan Shiaton smiled, opening a portal. This should drop you where the library was before, be careful. He is a magnet for problems, Cheshire purred. But he is somehow more dangerous than the things that chase him. He'll be okay. I will go with you, Bernard stated. Didn't you hear what I said I need to be alone? I sighed, this bear only had one thing in mind, and that was fighting me. I won't be close during training, but it has just occurred to me that you need me, Bernard said, and I raised an eyebrow at that. If you lose control and direct your attention to those of fairer means, no one would be able to stop you, he chuckled. Not that I can stop you, but I can keep your attention occupied in me, so that way you don't end killing innocent people. I blinked in surprise, in part, he was right. There wasn't anything stopping me from going to a nearby town. If I let my bloodlust take over, but if that happens, I could end up killing you. I stated, I know, Ursok smiled. And you are okay with that? I asked. I am, that's what rivals do. Ursok said with a slight smirk, besides, I get to see the human world two in one. Very well. I sighed. Katara POV every night I would wake up trembling in fear, remembering how badly hurt Arm was. When I woke up after the duel, his body broken and shattered, his blood coating the cold marble floor, and the eyes of that man, he said he was helping Arn. But I could see on his eyes, he wanted to kill him more than anything. It was like staring at the jaws of death to the dark abyss where monsters laid. It scared me, more than I cared to admit, knowing that not even Arn was able to defeat him, terrified me. If that monster ever wanted to hurt my family, my brother, Arn, I wouldn't be able to stop him. Are you okay Katara? Arn quaked in worry. I'm fine, just thinking what are we going to eat tomorrow. I lied, I didn't want to worry him. He already had one big task on his shoulders, defeating Ozai. He was already too young to fight a monster like the Fire Lord. I didn't want to burden him with a second one. It's okay? Cats, Sokka smiled, sounding fragile. We will make by as we have always done. He knew. He knew I was afraid. Yeah. I cried as a worried and confused arm hugged me, trying to soothe my worries away. Everything is going to be okay. Katara, Aun stated, so confident it made me for a brief second forget about everything. I will make things right. I know you will. I chuckled, but I knew I was only lying to myself. That monster was perhaps worse than Ozai. I couldn't really know until I met the Fire Lord myself, but I have never seen such a terrifying gaze before. Something so devoid of emotion. I had to ask myself, was it even human? From the harsh deserts of Sai Wong to the cold wasteland of the south, my journey would take time, and with two spirit companions, things ought to be fun. Yes, too, C. Cheshire decided it was time to check the human world. He was curious, as a cat should be. Though I knew he wanted to help, in his own messy chaotic way. So I accepted. Though it really made me wonder, why and how they got so attached to me. It was vexing, but at the same time relaxing. Their emotions were always positive, at least regarding me. No hate, no anger. They were my break from the shit I usually have to filter. And for that I was grateful. I wasn't going to tell them though, Ursok is already too attached as he is, and Cheshire, he is too crazy. I will burn the snow of the south with my power. Ursok shouted. Sometimes, you are unbearable, Cheshire chuckled. Oh yeah, Cheshire was a pun fanatic, which at first was fun, not it was like walking with a washed up comedian, a catastrophe, no pun intended. Maybe he is affecting me more than I had anticipated. Oh well, there are certainly worse things to learn than the art of puns. We should arrive to the south in around two months. I commented, while reading the map, we still had a lot of land to cover, but it was mostly neutral land, with all the stops being unimportant for the Fire Nation, and therefore left alone. Ursok looked at me, his ears twitched with excitement as his red-colored fur bursted into flames, in two months I shall defeat the South. Our battle will be legendary. You said that about breakfast Cheshire deadpanned. And lunch, I added with a grin. And let's not forget about Cheshire shuddered, when you went to the bathroom. I know. Ursok laughed, life is a challenge. I intend to win. That that was surprisingly wise for a bear whose entire brain is designed for battle. I suppose that is true. I commented. Please don't be wise, Cheshire chuckled. It disturbs me when you are wise. Though in retrospective, Ursok probably meant life was a challenge literally. Like he wanted to beat life, physically not emotionally. But when he's right, he's right. Alright. I think it's best we camp, out of Bar Sing Si. 
Before we embark any further, I stated, our duties. Cheshire asked exploding into confetti that said, what can I do? You are the fastest, so look around and find a good spot to sleep, I said. Cheshire raised an eyebrow at that, and with a smirk commented, I am a cat. Are you sure this is the best task for me you do know we sleep anywhere? I do. I rolled my eyes at him, but I also know you love sleeping close to water, and with a good supply of clothes. And that's just what we need. I winked. Clever little human, Cheshire smiled, before vanishing out of sight. What is my challenge? Ursok asked eagerly. Well, you find some wood and bring it here, and please don't burn anything including the wood. I chuckled. Ursok smiled, his eyes twinkled with excitement. I will win this. And with that, he ran to the closest tree, while shouting, face my might wood. As for me, I had another thing to do. Eat at a restaurant God knows I miss fine dining. What can I say? I got spoiled in the Northern Water Tribe, which makes me wonder, what is you doing right now? I want to visit her and Sakura, but I doubt they will recognize me or welcome me. I am sure that by now, most people know about the mysterious man that almost killed the Avatar. And if they don't, they are never going to believe I am me, new face and shit. And even if they did believe me and knew about me beating on, would they accept what I was right now, the natural enemy of their supposed savior? Or would they only two people I care about in the tribe shun me? I wasn't going to admit it. But if that happened, it would break a little part of me. You was like my sister, and Sakura like an aunt. The only two people I care about in this world, at least as of now, for the love of. You worry too much, Vada growled, startling me. Human relationships are a waste of time, for the most part, yeah. I chuckled, but you can't help it, as much as you try to avoid it you start to care truly disgusting. Vata sneered, if they don't accept you for what you became they are weak, those who run from those with power are nothing but stepping stones to a throne. Was Varta trying to comfort me? Huh? Well fudge me sideways. I would have never guessed you had a soft side, I remarked. I will pretend. I didn't hear such a stupid comment, Varta hissed. All right be my guest Sunder, I laughed. I am not. How dare you? Compare me with that disgusting piece of media you consumed in your past life. I will go back to sleep. I will not stand here and let a child insult me in such a way. Varta yelled. All right? But in all seriousness, I chuckled, thanks, you're welcome human, and with that, I felt Vata go back to his slumber. Maybe this merging with him wasn't so bad, without his obsession with Rava, he was a pretty interesting being. Halt in the name of quote the poor guard that had caught me red-handed climbing the wall, was knocked out with a quick rock attack to his nuts rendering him catatonic with a single attack, my balls why. The man squeaked in a high-pitched tone, I honestly felt bad for the guy. But it was the only way to avoid him seeing me, and enter the city without getting the entire army chasing me. But I knew that statement was a lie, for I had forgotten to use seismic sense and water sense to scout the area, and was left with no other choice. Training on the South Pole was relaxing, without people or spirits to bother me besides Cheshire and Ursok that would annoy me every now and then. Things were going well for me. The cold and harsh environment of the South relaxed me. It was soothing, who would have known I would grow to love this seemingly unlike climate. I felt like home at it, but enough about stupid sentimentalism. I was here to train, not to reminisce about how much I like the cold and snow. Which brought me back to square one, my training while going well, was, not progressing as I wanted it. The Avatar state was in simple terms a human, Akami, using all the spiritual chakras. Thought chakra, that dealt with the pure energy of the cosmos, which was blocked by earthly attachments. The water chakra, that dealt with the pleasure of the body and mind, which was blocked by guilt. The fire chakra that dealt with the willpower, blocked by guilt. The air chakra that dealt with love and was blocked by grief. The sound chakra that dealt with the truth blocked by lies. The light chakra that dealt with the inside of all things blocked by illusion. And last but no least the earth chakra that dealt with survival blocked by fear. According to Wan Shai Tong, I had three pathways blocked, which was the reason I had little power over my emotions over my avatar state. The sound chakra, the air chakra, and the thought chakra, which was surprisingly not what I had expected. I would have least thought the light chakra would be blocked, considering I had the incarnation of chaos and darkness within me. According to the scrolls one had given me, if I faced and unlocked those chakras, I would have absolute control not only over my power, but my empathetic condition. Lies, grief and earthly attachments were apparently my problems. The thing was, I didn't know what lies I had been telling myself. Or what was if I even had a reason for grieving. I kinda understood the earthly attachments thing. I was a human. I had earthly attachments no one can't say they don't. But the other two, I didn't understand. How is the meditation going? Cheshire purred, poofing into existence, in my lap. I I well, it's not going bad I answered with a sigh. 
But not well either, Cheshire sighed. Maybe I just need something to do I've been focusing on training all my life. Since I got here, maybe I just need to focus on something else. And leave this shit for later. Like what? Cheshire hummed. Like what? The one million dollar question. When I got here my goals were clear become strong enough to avoid all the dangers this word had to offer. Now that I was, I had nothing. Besides looking like Simbad and being the edgy version of the Avatar, I don't know, perhaps I could go back to the north and see how things go from there. I did miss you in Sakura. Heck after the spirits I even miss Paku. But I will take some vacations, I chuckled. Well, they do say a rested mind is the key to success, Cheshire nodded in agreement. You POV I missed him every day. Perhaps Sakura was right. Perhaps I did feel something for him more than friendship. But regardless of my feelings, I wanted him here, where I could talk to him, bother him, and train with him. Why did he had want to explore the world I sighed? Well, when I made the comment about you crushing on him, I did not expect this, Sakura chuckled. I don't think I like him that way. I wasn't even sure anymore. I would only know for sure if I saw him again. Maybe you don't bug, hey, I'm not saying you love him. But every girl needs a boy toy to release some tension. If you catch my drift, and Akira is the only boy you ever showed mild interest with, Sakura winked at me. Oh, for the love of. I blushed at the idea. I am a princess. A piece of advice, princess. Have some fun before tying the knot. Sakura rolled her eyes at me. Or do you think men actually go untouched to the holy unity of marriage? I am done for the day. I said trying to sound angry as I left the inn. But I couldn't the idea of me and oh why am I even thinking about it? Get a grip of yourself you Akira POV now that I had decided to visit the north, which in retrospective, made my trip to the south entirely useless. I had yet again to make another plan of travel, which made me realize, I needed a faster way of traveling. What I made in a month on, and any other character made in a week. We need to find some kind of mount of flying one, big enough for the three of us. I hummed trying to think where I could find one. Do whales fly? Ursok inquired, to which I ignored. I was not going to dignify that with an answer. You seriously lack in anything that is not fight related Chisaya on the other hand, could not hold back. If you need to fly I'll take us there for a price of course. You fit in my lap how would you? You can change your size can you? I was going to kill the cat if he said yes. He could have saved me weeks of travel to begin with. Yes, I can not only alter my size but I can shapeshift. So yeah, it would not be a problem for me, Cheshire answered. Why didn't you tell me that before? I basically growled. You never asked the cat shrugged, and I thought part of your spiritual training was the journey of getting here. So I didn't want to interfere, Ursoka smiled. No, Cheshire gulped. Cheshire said he wanted to, I chuckled evilly. No, no, no. Cheshire started to panic. He wanted to fight you. I finished completing my evil revenge. Let us fight. As soon as I said that, Ursok jumped at Cheshire. The ride to the north was smooth. The silky hair of Cheshire against my skin, made for the perfect bed. That accompanied by the night wind that was pleasantly cool tonight. It was perfect. From above Cheshire, I could see the sea, and more, the waves of the water moving side to side, up and down. A beautiful sight to behold. While I admired the view from above, Ursok was, in the meantime, talking about how many people he would challenge. And things like that, showing he still had his one-track battle-lusted fueled mind. You think the humans will recognize you? Ursok inquired, taking a break for his battle talk. How odd? I don't know. I sighed, but I sure hope you and Sakura do. If the rest don't it would be a plus. I chuckled. Oh yeah, the humans that shunned you for being the strongest. Ursok growled. I shall burn them to the ground. Haha, ha, no need to. I waved his idea off. But thanks, the sentiment is nice. I could tell that much. He was actually mad I was shunned. I could feel it on his emotions. Very well, Ursok pouted. I wanna meet that lady the one that cooks like a goddess, Cheshire added drooling at the idea. You will you will, I answered. The next day we arrived at the tribe. It was around noon. When we got to the moonlight inn, the streets around as always, were so busy that, at first, I didn't notice Sakura had changed the outside decoration of the inn. Opening the door, I walked inside with Ursok and Cheshire by my side. Like always Sakura was serving tables with a happy smile. Seeing her brought a sense of nostalgia I didn't know I even had, for without noticing and thinking I rushed at her, hugging her. M. Sakura said looking around, who are you? I missed so much you crazy lady. I chuckled as I let her go, just now remembering I had a new face, so I had to make her remember. Fuck Paku, Akira Sakura gasped after I said that. How? Why? And can whoever made you a new face make me younger? She added with a smile. Really that's all it takes for you to recognize me. I chuckled. Nobody says fuck Paku with the same feeling you put behind the words, Sakura winked. That and your voice is the same, my voice was the same. I could have sworn it was different, well it doesn't matter. I missed you, 
Oh, you are making me blush, Sakura joked as she gestured me to follow her to the back. So why the new face? I hummed, deciding whether to tell her the story or not. Well, in the end deciding to retell all my misery with details. Excluding Vato out of my tale. From getting my new face, to being tortured by the big spirits, to traveling around the world. Making sure to evade telling her about Vatu. Some part of me was scared she and you would outright shun me for having the spirit of darkness and chaos within me. So for now, I would keep it a secret. After a few hours catching up with Cheshire and Ursok eating the restaurant out, Sakura basically dragged me to the palace to see you. Not gonna lie, I was a bit stressed about it, but mostly excited to see her, wondering what had she been up to all this time, and if she like Sakura would recognize me at first glance. Inside the palace we were led to use bedroom by a guard. Inside you was sitting on her sofa reading a book. Putting the book down, she looked towards the door with a scrutinizing look, staring at me. Akira you gasped in shock, jumping out of her sofa, and tackled me into a hug. I blinked in surprise, wondering how the fuck did she know. I didn't even talk. How? I mumbled hugging her back. Half spirit remember, you chuckled. So that's how she knew it was me the moment she saw me. Well, I'm glad. I have a question though, you said, breaking the embrace. Why do you have a spirit inside you? I blinked in shock, instinctively taking a few steps back, while trying to formulate an answer for her inquiry. I well fuck it, time to be completely honest. I can't lie to them if they like me. They have to do it with Vata inside. I merged with one, elaborate that answer, Sakura added with a confused expression. Taking a deep breath I started to tell them about Vatu, about how he was one of the spirits that form chaos and order. That Arn had the order and I had the chaos. That because of that there were two avatars now. I spared no detail in my journey from me becoming the dark avatar to almost killing Arn. Wow, you said after a long moment of silence, assimilating what I had told her. So you are the avatar, or rather an avatar, Sakura concluded. Pretty much, I nodded. And you feel okay, Sakura added. That empathetic thing you said you had, doesn't get crazy with the spirit of chaos inside of you. Yes, yes it does, not much, liar, you sighed. Alright, it does bother me, but not as much, I chuckled, so you two are okay with everything. Yeah, Sakura winked, no matter how powerful you get kiddo you will always be my little Akira. No chaotic spirit can change what we feel, or new face, you giggled. Thanks, I smiled hugging them both, forcing myself not to cry, not wanting to show weakness. But I couldn't, it felt nice to be loved. Even with all the darkness inside of me, they loved me. They weren't even a bit afraid of me. Now, how about we have a nice dinner? Sakura said, I'll pay, deal, you, and I both said in one voice. After the very emotional reunion with my two human friends too, huh? I really need to increase that number. It is just sad. Anyway, after the reunion, we spend the day eating and catching up. Apparently the Northern Water Tribe was suffering more than ever, with the Fire Nation destroying their ships, ships that brought food and other various necessary items, putting the entire tribe in a precarious situation. Hundreds of soldiers dying almost on a daily basis just to provide an inch of commodity and safety. Which while not surprising altogether, it shocked me a bit. This was a side of the war I hadn't expected. In the show, the Northern Water Tribe never had any problems of this magnitude. I never expected things to get this rough, a naive thought. This wasn't a show anymore, war was as real as anything else. I simply decided to think otherwise to shut down any regrets of leaving. They have, you sighed, but don't blame yourself, she added with a frown. I know you Akira, and right now you must be thinking that this got worse because you left us. So let me clarify all of this in no way, is your fault, a man alone can only do so much in a war, Sakura added. Nice sentiments. But I knew I was at that point strong enough to make a difference maybe not win the war. But I was strong enough to reduce the damage. Maybe before, but I can now. I was the Dark Avatar. I had now the power to bring Ozai and his troops to his knees. I have the power to stop this now, with your Avatar powers. Sakura chuckled, allow me to paint you a picture. You take down Ozai, revealing there is a second Avatar. That of course, would make the Fire Nation stop. But for how long question mark, you are suggesting that once I die, they will go back to their old ways. I knew what she wanted to say, and she had a point. But unlike most creatures that wasn't the case with me, thanks to Vatu, I was not burdened by the evolutionary failure of aging, meaning they would never rebel, for I would be around forever. You do remember I am technically immortal. That would only keep them on a leash, Sakura sighed, and a leash made from fear breaks. They will at one point try to kill you, and start the war over again, another very good point, fear can only hold something for so long. The moment that fear started to fade, they would go at everyone again. Alright, then what do you think we should do? I sighed. Well, I might have an idea, Sakura said. But it's a risky one, more risky than killing Ozai. I chuckled. Well, my idea includes killing Ozai. 
but in a way that would make things easier politically speaking. Sakura said with her overly serious tone, quite abnormal for her. All right, you are scaring me, Sakura. You chuckled nervously. What I'm about to tell you, it's something I have kept a secret for 18 years. Sakura stated, getting our attention. My name, my birth name is Sulan Laken. I am a part of the Fire Nation. The ability to be exact. I blinked a few times, looking her up and down, before vocalizing a single word. What? I moved out of the Fire Nation for a various set of reasons. For one, I hated what we stood for. Sakura smiled sadly. And I always wanted to, well, have a small in. I what? You finally said, her operative system going back up. You what? How? Your papers show you are from a tribe close to the quote you were shut up as Sakura lighted her hand on fire. Oh my god, you are papers are easy to forge. Sakura chuckled. Huh. I was still trying to grasp all the new information. My plan is simple. We go back to the Fire Nation. I go back to my family, comma. I present you as my son, and we start a coup, Sakura said, breaking the silence. Huh, Akiro X is not working. Please restart the system. I still keep contact with father every now and then. He thinks I'm researching the air temples, so they will not suspect a thing, Sakura added. Huh, both me and you said. The hardest part will be convincing my father of helping us. But he is a man of family about anything. So he will side with you if he thinks you are his grandson and with me. Because I am his baby girl. Sakura chuckled. So will my brothers. Huh. I mumbled. Huh. You nodded. Then once we had their support we just have to start a coup kill the fire lord. And put your pretty ass on the throne Akira. Sakura chuckled. Huh. Akira X restarting please stand by. Huh. You mumbled. The next thing would be marrying you to a foreigner that would cement the peace even more. Sakura winked at us. Huh. Oh come on. This is not as impressive as you getting a new face, body, spirit, comma, age and last but not least the dark incarnation of chaos within you, Sakura pouted. I am sorry. I said coming back to reality. It's just wow, no kidding, you nodded. It's mind-blowing I am already knew Akira would do something of stupid proportions on his trip. Yes, I am predictable, I nodded. But this is mind-boggling, you added. It's true, I am a chaotic menace. But I did not expect this heck. I had Varta declaring his love to Rava above this on my list. I laughed. Don't make me come out there. Varta growled waking up just for that. You can't, I inwardly chuckled. All right, I get, Sakura chuckled. But what do you guys think? I think it's a fun idea. Worst case scenario, I kill Ozai. Best case scenario, I kill Ozai. I shrugged. It's a win-win for me. Yeah, and if things go as planned, you would be the Fire Lord, Sakura smiled. Say what now both you and I shouted in shock. Both you and I sat while we silently paid attention to Sakura's plan. While simple and possibly very viable, provided, of course, things go as planned. The plan was to go back to the Fire Nation, where she would present me as her child. And with time, start a rebellion from within. This plan while beautiful on paper, it had a bunch of holes. Like, for example, while she had indeed kept contact with her father, she hadn't told him about her having any kids at all. So things regarding my existence and how I just suddenly came to be would be hard to prove and fill. Sakura, what exactly are you going to tell him? I mean I sighed, it's... Look, while I'm up for the idea, I want to understand how will you make them believe I am your son. Well, I might have told my dad I had a kid, Sakura said, blushing. I got a cat a year after I left, and well... I referred to him as my baby on my letters, and dad never corrected me. Oh god, please tell me my name is not Cotton Ball or something. I chuckled. No, I never named him. I just called him baby, Sakura giggled. So let me see if I get this right. 18 years old, you left the Fire Nation, right? I asked, getting a nod from an answer. Then a year later, you got a cat. And in your letters, you called him your kid or baby, right? Sakura nodded once again, your dad, somehow never asked if that baby or kid was real or what was his name, or if he or she was human right. Well, he did ask he knows baby was a boy, Sakura said. All right, but your father never showed any interest in him. I mean, if he thought it was your baby and he is like you described wouldn't he had tried to meet him, and or at the very least, send some gifts. He can't leave the Fire Nation, his position requires him to stay. And well he did send a lot of stuff for his imaginary grandson. Every year I get a gift and money for him now you. With a letter of him begging me to go back so that he can meet his grandson, Sakura sighed. He just doesn't push me. Because he just thinks I am still mad with him for what he did. Alright so do I need a name change? I asked. No, Akira is pretty common, Sakura smiled. So what happens after he gets that throne? You ask, breaking her silence. Well, the idea is that once Akira has thrown, we will set to destroy the violent groups from within that incite violence, adding more fuel to the flames of this chaotic world. Our mission is curing the Fire Nation of its disease, Sakura said with a deadly cold tone, by eliminating it entirely risky. 
but probably safer than anything Akira was probably thinking, you chuckled teasingly. Safety is for the weak. I shot back at you, with a confident smirk, before turning back to Sakura. Anyhow, let's do it. Perfect, Sakura beamed at me, with a very unorthodox planet hands. I decided to stay on the tribe for a bit to relax, meditating by the spirits, without letting the rest of the tribe know I was here as to avoid fucking the plan. As I meditated above the tree close to the spirit oasis, laying near the two spirits, I couldn't help but let my mind wander into the depths of this adventure I was about to embark on. For one, I did not want to rule. Not for long, at the very least. I knew my shortcomings, and one of them was my social skills. I was barely able to tolerate small groups of people around me, so an entire country would be a bit too much. But I did want to destroy the war-loving aspects of the Fire Nation society, by cutting them from the root. After that, I would probably have to find someone worthy of ruling, someone completely opposite to Ozai, Iro. That could work if he wanted the throne. I suppose I will see how to fix that as I go. You could leave a cub. Is that how you humans call your littles? Vato inquired, breaking my meditation. You mean an heir that would mean I would have to stay until the kid is ready? Ain't nobody got time for that I chuckled. I wasn't going to lie, the idea of fucking the timeline. So bad my knowledge of it becomes obsolete, it's very enticing. So much, it's the second reason on my list for going with this plan. Because until now, my changes on the story had been pretty small, like killing Zhao. That didn't change shit. Killing Ozai, on the other hand, would change the entire world as I knew it from TV. Making my journey very interesting. Sakura POV 18 years ago. I vowed to never go back to the Fire Nation, a place that since childhood I had grown to despise. We were sheep following an ideal that the Fire Lord was perfect. And for that perfection, we applaud his every action, no matter how awful and inhuman said actions were. There it was, my nation praising a mad king. I was happy here. More than I could have possibly hoped for me 20 years ago, I had given up in trying to change the world. And now, I was going back, for I had found the weapon, the key I was looking for. Akira was the final piece of the puzzle, the weapon I would use to break the chains. I felt bad for using him, but I wanted to save my country and the world from its own outdoing. Life in the Fire Nation in this world was nothing but a momentary flicker, with every cruel second spent delaying the inevitable in an endless war, that on the Avatar and every Avatar before him had failed. Balance. Harmony. Bullshit. Chaos was ultimately the only thing that ruled us. That's why I knew Akira was the right person for this job. He was a human that embraced the chaos within him instead of hiding behind a sea of lies to make himself feel better. A chaotic avatar was what his world needed, not the other avatars. Every single avatar before Un had failed us. Their so-called quest for peace had doomed us all. In this life, nothing was fair. The system the white avatars themselves had created was broken. But with Akira on my side, I was going to help him tear it all down, breaking a system that had always been flawed, and remaking it into one that works, one that doesn't rely on the help of the avatar, that had so many times before failed us. One that is harsh and fair for everyone. I still remembered what Aung said before leaving, every life is precious, a kid like that was not suited for anything. Life was cruel. From our very first breath to our last, we are doomed to follow the broken path other avatars had left behind for us. But no matter what we do, the path always ends at the same door. War. If Roku were half the man Akira was, he would have killed Sozin, stopping him altogether his idiotic ideas of war, leaving a message to those that seek to disturb the peace. But he couldn't. Arm was on the same path. A naive little child that thought Ozai's life was precious. Akira, on the other hand, was not a stranger to killing. And never did without a good reason. He understood the root of all evil had to be exterminated if peace was to endure. And that concludes this episode. If you enjoyed it, I'd seriously love it if you guys could leave a like on the video as it genuinely helps out so much. And it keeps me going. Plus, it takes only one second. That said, have a wonderful day. See you in the next one.